Yes, welcome to keeping the ball on the ground. Big man, what's happened? Sorry. It's only two of us. I know. What the... Uh, where are we? <laughs> We're in the storage vault. We'll come to that in a minute. But uh, obviously Andy's away back to the Jam Tarts, you know, club. I good know. move. I, I, obviously Andy kept texting me, sorry. He kept asking me, could I put a good word in with Jim Jeffries? Phoned Jim Jeffries about six or seven times. Said to Jim, look Jim, great guy. Pish on the park. <laughs> ultimately, he's a great guy. He'll get you points just for the park. Why did you phone him when you were lying next to him in bed? <laughs> uh, Selena's not here as well. You'll never believe what's happened. Susan phoned us last night. No, this morning, sorry. Uh, Paul's in hospital. Hey, what happened to him? I thought he'd got it stuck in his zip again, but it's uh, it's the uh, low blood sugar again. That way I've got a mask on you. Uh -huh. So she was going to pick him up, but the hospital said the last time it happened was in Elgin, so the emergency contact at the time has got to pick him up. Oh, that's right, aye. You know who the emergency contact is? Right, I'm your man. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> There's your sugar! There's your sugar! <laughs> Fergie, what's happening? Nothing much, mate. You We're good? Look at this guy. Again. We're fucking the well. I said, we got the fat tail, but. Yeah, you go, big man, over there. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Good to see him, Fergie. Your uh, best you know ever signing. Do you know what? I've missed him. I've missed him. I've been watching the show. And he's doing well, isn't he? Flying, mate. You're doing well. Close down my way. He texted me yesterday. And said, what was it? I'm looking fat. I was worried because I, I remember you. looking well. Oh, yes. Yeah, he's looking alright. I, I wouldn't say well, I'd say alright. I feel sick, you know. Physically sick. Uh -huh. Scared. Nerves. Is this a lot? Have you not seen him since Clyde? Yeah. Not seen him since Clyde, the last day. <laughs> Panicking. Right, we'll come to that in a minute, but what I need to say is we're filming today for the Storage Vault, Scotland's largest independent provider of commercial and domestic storage. Done that well there, didn't I? Uh, if you need any storage, an office, or even a new workspace while you build your business, Give them a call on 0141 uh, and mention Open Goal for an additional discount at one of their sites across the country. That was brilliant, wasn't Superb, it? Simon. Well. Superb, mate. Wow. Right. So, Barry, last That's time you seen him. He's different levels now, isn't he? Ah, he you've, you've brought us on, I think, though. Aye. Working you've with you, mate. You've took him away from me. <laughs> no, do you know what? I'll, I'll be honest with you. You know what? He knows, he knows the game. No, he's great. Cheers, I've mate. Been, I've been surprised. Thanks very much. We're going to ask on it. I'm a joke and all that, but you're, you're serious about Fair it. Fair you what you're after. See, the bonus with you is, he's quite intelligent. No, Although, I had a shocker last night with St. Martin St. Johnston, but. <laughs> no, you never had a shocker. We know I had a shocker. <laughs> Barry, see if you get a high, because you'll know what the Celt is too big for that, but see if you get a higher job, will you take him in with you? He's already asked me. I think I would, I. Perfect. Yeah, Confirm, so Simon. Seen at Arsenal? Slady's heart sank, yeah. Disgusted. <laughs> Can he come? Aye. Third time lucky. Imagine Aye. that. <laughs> 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 no, come down to London. I'll go to Kelty. Come down to uh, Arsenal. Aye, ah, yeah, I'll, I'll bring him. Down. I'll wait to see uh. the training ground. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, when was the last time you seen him, Barry? Three years ago. Three and a half years ago. Aye, something like that. Three or four years ago. Um, horrible, heartbreaking the way we ended it, wasn't it? Because me, me and Barry, Simon, had a, a, a special relationship. Listen, and I, and I don't like to throw him under the bus early on, but Bob, I felt, didn't like that relationship me and you had. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry, I swear to God, he always stuck his nose in when it didn't belong. Just let us do old foreign players, do you know what I mean? <laughs> just, we battled it on the field together, so just let it happen. <laughs> so what happened then? How, how did he leave Clyde? Can you, what, what do you, what's your I, side I don't know. Listen, there was a couple of times you missed training. Aye. You come back, we were trying to get him fit. You, hey, there's no doubt you could see the ability. Was he good? Ah, he had the ability. And I'm not just saying that. He did, he had ability, but try to get him fit and try to get him focused was, was hard. <laughs> <That'd> be, <laughs> but then he's, obviously I knew he had a couple of issues, but if he came and he, he spoke to me, I maybe have helped him put him in the right direction. But listen, it is what it was, um, I'm not going to fall out with him about it. He obviously did have some problems, but it's good to see he's doing well now. <laughs> <laughs> was, it, was it Broadwood just played on it? Did you ever, big man stays in coming out, did you ever see him shaking the vending machine? No. <laughs> Never seen, I've not seen the big man for years. Fergie, last time I saw you would have been, uh, probably played a basketball game, no. all the years ago. It's a bit easier to speak to you than it is right now. Uh, did, did you know he was shit scared of you? I wasn't shit scared of you, I was, no. I was, wasn't it, there was never shit scared of him. I was just kind of like, you were at the top of your game then, you know what I mean? For me, you were like, that person that you didn't want to let down, you know what I mean? We, mm -hmm. we're all, we all felt like that because we all, we all, we all, we all are, um, 
were in awe of you because you were fucking, you were, you were a right good player. Uh, it was just yeah. demanding, big man. That, that's well, the way I was. I've always been. Aye. That's the way I was brought up. It was just no to be no. The, the big man or, or people to be, be scared. I just put demands on not just myself but other players. Because, see, to be honest with you, there's a lot of good players in that Scotland squad even back then. I did say to Si. <laughs> <laughs> I did say to <laughs> Si there, but at that time, like, you're playing with, I think you're playing with Blackburn and stuff, and you were still fucking bossing down the training or something. Like you had expectations, so all you were wanting was everybody to beat that same level, everybody to try and, because at the end of the day, you're, 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 you're the Scotland king, you're the captain at the time. So either you're Paul Lambert, it was one of two years. That, that would have been, I would have been captain at that time. Aye, and you're like, he's maybe trying to be that first guy to get us to the, to the next Euros or <clears> the next <throat> World Cup, and he's just, but obviously it was just a transition. Can you remember yeah. sitting next to him on a plane? I remember we sat on the plane on the way back for a game, and... What were we doing? No, what they doing it bad. You sat down and you said, how do you sit here? Like, man, this is not boss. I sat aside you. And I pulled out my phone and you were like, what the fuck are you doing that phone on? Oh, I don't like flying. Ah, no, I don't like flying. On the ball, just put that on. I don't like flying. Pure we see. That's one of the things I'm scared of. I hate flying. Flying there. Someone just asked me to sit beside you, just in case we crash your bed. You were flying for that full year, you were at Clyde, didn't you? Flying. One of the best players I've got to had under your um, books did he, did, did he join in training Slurry? <laughs> unbelievable I think your ankle was going there I could see you struggle movement that's why I used to go by him a lot you know what I mean <laughs> <laughs> what I was going to say about Scotland the big man did he belong did he belong in the international set up because for I, me I spoke, no. to, I spoke to Sally about this right and be honest what did I say he said the big man was a handful he was it on his day uh, on his day handful well I think it was that one season at Sunderland ah, yeah, where yeah. you were I you was, were flying. I, I, was, I think I finished the top goals for, for Sunder that season and then at that time, Scotland, we didn't have a great array of strikers to pick from. But I knew when I played well, I could do a job for Scotland, but the, it's like you saying it. She you get away with clubs and teams and the nerves kick in and the pressure, mm. sometimes you're not ready for it, but you're in there and you're just trying to do your best. You're so right, because when I went out of Amsterdam, the nerves were flying. <laughs> <laughs> how, did, uh, how did you sign in for Clyde come about? Who, who told you? Well, obviously, I, I knew about him, but a few of the boys he was parley with. Yeah. And uh, you'd been out the game a wee while, and I think it was Scotty McLaughlin. Yeah. Says to me, listen, Paul Slane, and I obviously knew him. Yeah, and I'd spoke to a few people. I, I that one. I spoke to a few people about him, and everybody come back with the same one. Listen, if you can get him in the right frame of mind, you've got a decent player there. And you could see when he came and he trained, wasn't he fat enough to start? Was he fat? I was. I, I, I was wouldn't say you were. You were a bit overweight. You weren't fat. Mm. Look, can but, you look Lenny as the new? <laughs> that's fat. <man. laughs> <laughs> but we got him, to be fair, we got him at a level and then he played a few games, done really well for us and then he just went away again, just never turned up a well, couple of times at training and I don't think that's fair none of boys, you know what I mean, the boys are all working during the day and I, I wanted everybody, I can understand people might miss training at part time if I've got a job or whatever, need to do overtime, but then he started no turning up. Is he the hardest player you've ever managed? No. <laughs> no, no. Bob, Bob Malcolm. Hi, big big Bob. What would you rather wake up tomorrow with Bob's body or Slaney's face? Please. No, don't do that. that. <laughs> Fuck. Come on. I'll, I'll, go, good, I? I'll go Bob's body. That's <laughs> <laughs> bad, isn't it? Oh, brilliant. Uh, right, Slaney, tell the story. Elgin. I think you've only ever told it once. So you give us your side but of it. What I'm going to say is, right, I was no well. Right, you see, were out the night before? No, I wasn't out the night before. I didn't go out the night, so I swear to God. I never really did. But So that we went up to Elgin, but Cheltenham was on at that time. So all the boys were up the back of the bus, putting on coupons. I had, swear to God, about a million Mars bars. Keep telling the story. Yeah, yeah. no. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Keep telling. So, when I, I was genuinely no well. So when I started the game, five, I think it was five minutes in, wasn't it? Was it? I came after. Ten, ten minutes in. And I ten just, minutes in. I'm looking at it and you were just walking about and... I'm like, what's up with this guy now? <laughs> <laughs> and he just looked across and he says, I can't play. I and then I went, I, I went mental. I went mental. <laughs> but here, do, do you know what was mental about that? <laughs> Barry, you know what was mental about that? When I got took off, the Elgin doctor came in and I was like, I'm no well. So he's put his, he gave his test or something and that's when he said, you need to go to hospital. Mm. So like, I, I genuinely was no well. The, the wee joke side, you know what I mean? I, I struggled playing at Elgin, see with their fans not watching me. Do you know what I mean? They looked at me. 
Do you know what I mean? There's <laughs> 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 only about 100 people in it. If exactly, I need a big crowd. So wait, Barry, see when the final whistle goes, does somebody say to you, you're going to need to go... No, the, do you know what happened? Remember Ross Fisher? Fuck me, I got Aye. Thing, I. <laughs> <laughs> he, he broke his nose, so during the game, he gets sent to hospital. So, so you went with Ross Fisher? I, I thought, was in first. Right, I thought to myself, do you know what, the bus has got to get down the road, the boys are all working the next day. I says to Big Bob, listen, we need to get a motor and we'll go to hospital. And we picked him up and drove him back down the road. What, just you three? No, Ross no, Fisher, Ross Mark Fisher. Roberts was there, I know. Really? Yeah. Mark Roberts, the coach. The Scuddy, really, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> so, we even, and then, he never says anything for the first two, and then the next thing he's, he's came out to say, he was brand new, there was nothing wrong with him. <laughs> <laughs> there was nothing wrong with him. Mentally. Listen, some things yeah, are just going to... But see, this thing is, Sai's one of the guys that... But I, I went and picked you up, and I took you down I the road. Did he say thanks? I did, I was, I was a oh, nice yeah, boy. I think, I'm sure, did Bob drive or you drive? Because I'm sure Bob bust the tyre, remember? Aye, uh, And you, he gave me a mouthful for about fucking 10 minutes. Big Bob was shaking <laughs> on the wheel. But he called his other place. But this is what I was... It's about two in the morning. Was it? Two in the morning, aye. We had to wait. I mean, they, they, went to the, they went to the garage, si, and I had the money. He's like, oh, of course, fucking still get the money. <laughs> and uh, he's like, do you want it? But I was starving and I was too scared to see it in me. Whole way down, starving. Eh? They no were all munching in the motor. I was too scared to see, see I wanted it. In. But what was it going to say? I found with Sai a guardian angel. Is that what you can call it? Yeah. You Thanks. can look up to. Mm. Whereas I did with yourself and other guys. I'm not sort of your ass, well, I'm up, but you're not inside, right? <laughs> but you've seen it as well. Like one week I can be unbelievable and then other weeks I'm just I don't turn up he's, no you're always you, unbelievable mate. no but it's like you remember it, like I just didn't turn up weeks do you know what I mean so no. it's obviously there's a wee issue there that we maybe need to sort but I've always listen this is bizarre right I'm getting a wee bit excited in it, and I shouldn't since I've been a young boy there's been so many like, different personalities in my head but no like no like people say I'm doing all that like one day I wake up and think I'm going to be a hard man today right <laughs> but no but no just like but then I'll cut a boot acting like that but, but <laughs> believe in it then the next day I'm going to be soft. Do you know what I mean? And then start here. This guy's unreal. Here. And then I start being nice to people and please, not that. Other days. So, whatever day I wake up. And what you do? Horny as fuck. <laughs> 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 no, but Simon, that's a, there's something I probably need to get a grip of. But I've always been in control of it. I could control who I wanted to be. Um, but certainly the last few years, I've been no control. Do you regret it? Do you regret it? Well, I, I regret how some of my decisions. I think we and Sarah got an interview one day. And the, I know everybody gets injuries, but the surgery I got, I get through it. My knee operation, my ankle, and then my hip was the one that fucked me that I couldn't get back for that. I couldn't train extra days. It was agony. Do you know, Andy Murray, the exact same. See, when he got that, I was happy. No for him, but... Because I almost thought nobody believed me. Yeah. Because they got um, scans and all that and couldn't find it. So I'm like, oh, fuck, this is... Look, but it was fucked. And it still is to this day. Um, taking pain girls, are you any tramadol, bro? <laughs> <laughs> I've not got tramadol, but I've got something else in the motor. Oh, we, you'll get a wee bottle of red wine, that'll serve you, mate. Brilliant. So, I, what was in a... But hey, how good's a red wine? Oh. Can top, we get a wee bottle in the new? Top. Take a few. No, I've not got it in the motor, but... Right, listen, okay, I'll, I'll cover later. Right, last story <laughs> I want to ask you about Clyde. Do you remember putting him on with five minutes to go and after two minutes, he, 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 did he hear you asking the ref how long there was to go? So, uh, this, this is... Uh, do you remember? I, no, I never heard that, but Bob heard it. And Bob never says anything to me <laughs> to, to after the game. He never had... Oh, I would have just brought you back off. I would have took him straight off. Well, well what had happened was... Is, uh, Bob says he's got on, but I've just put him on. Bob says he's ran on and he's ran past the ref. He's not even on for two minutes here. How long to go? <laughs> No, <laughs> when Chad <laughs> Chico. <laughs> oh, no, I, I went on. I remember. We'll I get, just won the game. It was a draw one each. I'm sure it was. So you won't be worried about. No, I wasn't worried. I was just fucked. <laughs> I made one sprint up the line in my lip. But see, to be fair, I had took Kukodimo right before I went on. And see, when I was running, mate, I felt like I was fucking running slow motion. I was like in the ref. Like, how long to go? And I remember, I remember, I was like, I'm the final sub here. There's nobody that can come on for me. I'm like, oh my god, I remember Bob fucking just staring to that and I'm like, what have I done here? But see that day, I think that was that was my that was my final game in football. And after that day, I remember my dad, he didn't speak to us for about two months after that. He said that's one of the most embarrassing things I've seen. And he and he's wore that suit and he's still exactly. And to be fair, he's an embarrassment. <laughs> I mean that guy brought me up to be as horny as I'm up. <laughs> he forced me here. He forced me to Amsterdam. <laughs> <laughs> now listen, George, I, I slaughtered we had you last week, uh, and he said the pressure living up with his dad. I've had the pressure living up to my dad. Do you know yeah. what I mean? An ultimate shagger, and I wanted to be like that. <laughs> <laughs> right, last bit on Clyde. 
Because I told him he's a both for coming. I still got up to Broad dude. Old Willie was asking for the both of us. Mm. Willie oh, Pearson, what remember a, him? Mm. What a guy. You know what? Aye, aye, aye. <laughs> Bastard. <laughs> <laughs> You're the only cunt I've not got with that. Do you remember him? He does the, the car park. Oh, all right, the boy in the car park. Proper character, Willie aye, Pearson. Aye, right. There he's there. He's good. <laughs> <laughs> it was like him. <laughs> uh, right. You've also met, managed another open goal team member, Andy Halliday. Aye. What was he like? As a... Player and a boy. I, I tell you what, I seen Andy when he was at Livingston, when he got let go for, for Rangers, went and watched a few like, reserve kind of games. And he, at the time, he was a wide player. And you could see he had something. So right. I knew he was Rangers daft, and he always kind of... I knew his agent as well. Kept in tow where he went, obviously down to Middles in Middlesbrough, I got that move, then went a couple of loans. And then I took all at Blackpool and I phoned up the agent. I says, What's, what's this script with Andy Halliday? He's, he was out in the cold at Middlesbrough. I brought him down to Blackpool and he was brilliant for me. You brilliant played him left back, didn't you? I played him left back. Andy will tell you just sent a midfielder, but I think he's a better left back. Do you, right? Aye. Uh-huh. Aye. But he was brilliant for me. Brilliant but attitude. Brilliant attitude. Did he pull people up in that in the dressing room? Did he that? Aye, he wasn't, he wasn't scared to do that, which I liked. Yeah. He wasn't scared. He's a good scared. personality, isn't he? Aye. Like, he he's, himself, do you know what? He's, he got unfair criticism, I thought, at times when he was at Rangers. Yeah. He's a, he's a decent football player, Andy. But you, you used to go Loved for a beer. You went for being pals and teammates to then you being the manager, wasn't it? So would you get a beer with him and Gaz McKenzie, Goodwill, in there? Aye, aye, I used to travel with me, Gaz and, and Broadfoot. When we played, right. I was coming to the end of my career. Then I got an, an operation in October and then just got sacked in the January, I think it was. And then I took on. Next thing I'm for being the captain and organising night suit. They haven't eh? Is that difficult? Drop them. Hmm? Is that really difficult, that going for you in the change room and then being the manager? Aye, because you've got to, at the end of the day, the 20 boys in the, in the dress room, the vast majority of them are your are good pals. Then you need to make a decision to drop some of them and you had to. You're getting to that stage now, aren't you? Uh-huh, the coaching. But you've I got to do it. Uh-huh. You've got to do it. I don't, I don't mind it, but you've got to tell them it's, it's part of it. You, you can't pick 18 players. Were you hoping when you were at the end of your time at Blackpool when you knew that your career was coming to <coughs> a close, were you hoping that a real opportunity would come no, somewhere? You know how some players kind of continue playing uh, for the hope that the club they're at, the manager might get the boot and you're that senior pro. They might just <coughs> Did you ever think... No, obviously at Blackpool, mm-hmm. but did you say, oh God, I maybe, I maybe, when the boy got the sack, mm-hmm. did you say, well, I, I couldn't maybe do it? No, do you know what I was going to do? I knew I was retiring, because the, after the surgery in October, the, the surgeon says, right, bang, it's over. Aye. Don't try again. I was going to take a bit of time out and go and travel about and watch other clubs. So it kind of fell, I didn't want to take it, no. but nobody else would take the job. And it was a chance to keep the club up. Was that owner mental or No, nah, crazy, was man. Was he crazy? Crazy, aye. Is it Carol Austin? Aye. Six How months before that, I fell out with him and he made me go and train with the, the youth team. No I way. I had to train with the youth team at a five-a-side part, aye. And then six months later... He offered you the job? <laughs> that's, how, that's how crazy he was. And sometimes he would come in and talk to you, other times he was... he just walked past you. But he was all right that transfer window when he knew... If he going for the championship down to League One, the club are going to lose a fortune. Mm. So he gave him a bit of money to go and get Halliday, Goodwillie, uh, and I brought on another two or three players. Um, and they done well for us, to be fair. We weren't the great to watch, we were shit to watch. That pitch, though, to be fair, had more bubbles in his jumper. You know what, we had to play a, uh, <laughs> we had to play a certain way, it was shit to watch, but do you know what, he kept him up. And Halliday, you? sign for Hearts. Ah, oh, We need to him. tell exclusive. Had a lot of people asking, is he going to keep doing up and go? He is going to keep doing it. Yeah, Obviously, I don't think he's going to get the money he was getting at Hearts. He's at Rangers, so he's going to keep coming up and go. And he's also punting Herbalife now. Believe me. Aye. So then, do you want a twenty-one smoking. free draft? Uh-huh, that's what he's going to do. Is he? Uh-huh. Get his money up in it. Uh-huh, to get his money, money up. So. Yeah, that's, that's a good sign. Uh-huh. It's a good move for him. That's a great fine. move. But Kev, the only thing I think is, I would like to have seen Andy still in the top league. I know Hearts are going to go up in a, probably a year, ah, yeah. but I would love to have seen him this year. Sorry. Biggest season in Scottish history, I believe, and uh, I would love to have seen him in there. Yeah. Saying he's been with Andy, like, that's it. Like, he's been out of fit, but it's not a long time since he left Rangers, but that uncertainty in the cold there, and there's a lot of players Aye. in worse situations than Andy. It's a great club he's been there. So if you go to a club like Hearts, who are always in the championship, it looks like it's a step down. It's not really, it's a year of football. Get yourself fit, get playing, get your feet under the carpet. <laughs> Next year, apart from should be back in the Premiership. 
And you can see his clear bit of hearts. Yeah. Yeah. He could become I a, tell you, brilliant club man. Massive even my brother, brilliant. I used to go through and when Derek obviously left and went to Hearts, I used to go through and watch Hearts my dad the second week. Did you, huh? I loved it. I think until you're brilliant in there, stadium, man. Yeah, it's a great atmosphere. You don't realise what it's really like. Uh, because I was like, well, it's a good move going to Hearts. But see, once I got my feet under the carpet, I was like, fucking hell, this is, this is the kind of... I wish I'd signed here uh, years ago if I had the opportunity because good traditions, good fan base... The pitch, everybody loves playing at Tiger Castle, mm. it's a great atmosphere, so... Fans are amazing, aren't they? Andy, oh, they're crazy, man. Hopefully yeah. Andy gets that, and they've got, he's got a... He's got a was he? No, he would have played in the sport, he would have played in the sport, Rangers, so you'll not get the semi-final. No, he can still no, play. No, he can still play. Yeah, I can still play. I, we were talking about that last That's night. That's what I was saying, it was on Halloween, so he can keep his mask on as well. <laughs> <laughs> but I tell you, it's a good move from. him. Good move. Definitely, I mean, the Hearts will piss the championship, won't they? They should be the team they've got. Yeah. Talking of Hearts, Kelly Hearts, mate. Aye. How are things going? Obviously, he's a flying last year. He won the league. How disappointing not getting the league. I thought it was a set that you would Aye, get to play. So did we, to be fair. Um, Imagine UV Willow. Willow would have crumbled, didn't he? Oh, shit, his pants. <laughs> I, do you know what? It, it was a, it was one of the ones. We worked ever so hard to, to get there. To be fair, I changed the full team last year. Went and made a lot of good signings. The club backed us. A lot of good players. Yeah. And awesome. it's a, do you know what? It's a hard league. Mm. A lot of good teams in that league. Especially this year as well, mate. Uh, I mean, Bride well, yeah. East Kilbride have pumped a bit of money, but the boys are a bit done, but you've got to say this, and it's, it's forgotten about now. We need, to, we need to kick on again. Every team wants to beat us. Do you get, it's a cup do you get final. abuse of huh? I don't but, mind that, but nah. I like that. Uh-huh. Would you I take like him that. back? Hmm? Would you take him? I, I, I honestly think... Ah, he's kept, man. <laughs> Assistant kept, man. <laughs> Imagine Callum's me, a good guy, isn't he? You know, Callum is fantastic. Listen, I, I, seem, I, I love Jimmy Murphy to bits, but seeing that wee bit of mould, you want him to be lift it a wee bit, do you know what I mean? Have a bit of personality about him, but a nice guy about the place. You don't want your kit man too much. So Who's Jimmy Murphy? The Rangers player, Hibs player now. Right, and the same mould as the Oh, the same mould as the kit man, right. Uh-huh. man just needs a wee bit of mare. Because you've given him a few bollockings down the years. Oh, he's a good guy. But, but, but he ain't too good on him. He's a good guy. And, uh, but listen, I would love to come in, because Sai knows how much I love coaching. And... Do you know doing a coaching thing out in Canvas Lang? No? With Dom Thomas. Aye. But that was, that was just like, but actually proper like be a coach. And I wish we had the tactic board here today. So does Kev. Kev's wanting to be a coach as well, aren't you? No, but no, see I'm this, sorry. I'm going to get into Kev, sorry. See this fucking <laughs> playing out for the back. It oh, well, I saw about Arsenal last night. Listen in. See if you've got the players, right? If you've got the two of the players, you can pass out. Be my guest. Go on. Do you know what I mean? Be it's, my guest. Be, be my, my guest. guest. Da, 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 don't know what, mate. And, uh, <laughs> but see, see if you have no get the players. Be sensible. Do you know what I mean? They're all getting carried do away. Do you play like that? Play no, it for the back. No. Mate. But listen, if it's see if it's on, go and play. Yeah. But do you know what? See if it's no one. Get the back four up or back three, whatever. Even your you're days after playing, just fair. You never played like that? No, that's what I was going to say. Up the park, Aye. goal kicks, you just put up the park, try and win the second. And then go play, play in the half. Yeah. Play in the opposition half. That, Imagine you haven't impressed big man as a striker now. See the way they I all don't like play. watching this. If, 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 if you gave the back four the ball and they were playing it, you need the whole team up to press. Yeah. See, see if one and Disney press. Disney what? He'd be the one that was the best. Guardiola by playing. That's all right when you've got the best players. Exactly. Mm. Yes. Yeah. I'm everybody that's comfortable on the ball, everybody wants the ball, everybody, you need, I'll take it. That's great. But see if you've got two of that 11 that can you fucking take the ball comfortable, yeah. the whole shit just collapses. You've got yeah. two centre backs in the six yard box with a goalkeeper and they're passing That's crazy, man. And see as well. One. Crazy. <laughs> but the centre mids, they don't want it. So you I was said watching, that to Xhaka. Xhaka and Elneny last night, Kieran Tini, one of the best players in the league, getting the ball, but they two don't want the ball. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Uh, need to ask you about COVID as well. How's it been? It's a nightmare, isn't it? Saying to them, I had to get a. We played Dundee, couldn't get a shower. Boz were stickier than a toffee apple, anyway. Back for Dundee to Glasgow, sitting without a shower, mate. Nightmare. See, it's all right, Sai, si, with the weather. See, the weather's been no too bad, but see if it's going to be pissing the rain at night or pissing the rain on a Tuesday. The boys have got to come out their, their motor with their strip. We've got, the, our boys have got to come with their strips on. Right. I don't know what you're doing. Nah, we travelled up and got changed in the stand. No, they, we are. Our COVID-19 officer says that they've got to turn up, so we gave them the strip away to, to turn up on the Saturday. They turn up with their shinies and boots and all that one. Oh, but see if it's pissing the rain, go to get straight into the car on the way back to go. And some of them are travelling about hoops. He's away doing them free. Uh-huh. He's travelling tours. With, with a strip on? Right. The it's boys a, in Glasgow are travelling an hour and a bit. It's, it's no great. Do you think there's not, a chance teams could go bust for this? Aye. Yeah, definitely. Aye. Shocking, eh? We've mm. got to pay, I, I don't know, 
Well, who are you was playing in the bet, Fred? The first United, couple United are paying for us to get tested. Are they? Are they? That's class, that. That's a class, that. Right. St. Johnson. So, do they pay for you? Or they no, I think we are just paying ourselves, and it's costing us a it's costing us a fortune. And we rely on, Kev, we rely on, see, like the fans getting into the social club, and aye, aye, the news will be big on hospitality up yeah. in Peter Reid, wouldn't he? Uh -huh. So, it's kind of killing us a wee bit. See, <laughs> I, I, I'm surprised, right? By you, Barry, that you've no went to like, the SP. I've SP said this time as well. SBFL, because. I'm not going to compete with other managers because I don't know what they're like. I can see when listening to them, no got a lot about them. Who? The other, but the majority of the managers in the league, the top league, and they, they might be good, but I'm just saying, having worked under you, knowing your personality as a captain or that, I'm just, and, and your way of playing and different, how have you not went up? Like, how are you with Kelty Hearts? Do you want to stay at that level? I, I, we've spoken about this, haven't you? You've mm. asked me a couple of times. I'm happy with what I'm doing now in terms of a wee bit of media stuff and coaching. I had 22, 23 years of no being in the house, no yeah. seeing the family, no spending time with them. So this is my kind of family time, but I've you never know in the future. But I'm happy. I enjoy the coaching side. I also enjoy the wee media side of it as well. I think it, um, but then it's given me my... I've got my own free time as well throughout the... like on a Sunday and... What do you do with your free time? Spend it with Fraser. family. Oh, yeah, I'd, I'd go out and see my mates, but I had to hardly get the time to do that. Mm. The kids are all older, I can maybe go out with them, have a couple of beers with the, the boys. Or... That's what Alan said. He says when he played for Rangers for three years, he never never went out once. Mate, I, I didn't have a life. I lived in a bubble. Look, see what we're doing now? Yeah. Kind of with the COVID type stuff. See, like, things with the, the kids, like, just be daft things, like, play things at school or whatever. i never seen any of that. Why did you not go, in case? No, because I was away. Right. We would play Saturday, we'd be a European game during the week. We'd fly away. See, after you got beaten that on a Saturday, would you not speak to the missus for days? No, I wouldn't speak to them. I'd just that's go and sit day. in a room. Would you? I took it seriously. But that's the way that I dealt with things. Mm. If we won, nah, I was fine. I'd walk in and we'd maybe go for something to eat and maybe go for a couple of beers or whatever. But if we lo lost, nah, man, that was me. It was over for me the weekend. I'm done. Are you the same? No, I never. I, 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 I had a drink and I loved going to Hamish and Rav because I felt comfortable there because right. my mates were there. They treated me just as kids. Right. Right. But when, any other time at Coventry, I was there for two and a half years and I went out once. Did you not? Nah, Sundown, the only time I would never go out was when we won because you felt that you were allowed to go out. Yeah. Um, Kamarnik, didn't go to Kamarnik at all, and even my time of hearts. I never went out once, remember? I think a teammate, it was a, it was a, like an end of season thing, awards, and only out for a few beers, but I just never felt that, I just hated the fact that, you, that some guy had felt that he had the right to come up to you and abuse you because you'd lost a match when really you're just kind of socialising out with the football, so. Guys, see, yeah, that, that's the thing that annoys me. See, for me, I don't care what MD says. No player wants to go out and get beat get beat play sharp. That's what I mean. That's why I would no. always go to like, If a joiner made his job on, on a Friday, he wouldn't sit in the house all uh, weekend, would he? But I just no, took exactly. it to heart. I, I would go and have a couple of drinks in the house myself, but I would go and sit in my, my wee room and with the TV on and just think, right, what do I need to do? I need to make sure this doesn't happen next weekend. So I would be preparing myself for the week ahead. That's torturing yourself, wasn't it? Aye, but that's, that's the way I felt I get the best out of myself. Yeah. So see now as a manager, and see... I'm the same. I guess, I'm the same. <laughs> are you the same? Aye. So could you not even enjoy your career then, if that's the way you were... Did you enjoy it now? Oh, Just, I love, I love my career. Listen, I, I've done something that millions of boys would have loved. Yeah. I played with the team I supported. I won trophies. I played Champions League. I played in the Premier League. How do you think we've no, we don't get players like you now with that mentality? I don't know whether it's the whether it's the grounding they get now at the clubs. You know, I, it was probably the same as you. My apprenticeship was the toughest two years of my life. Yeah, toughest. I think it's too easy now. I think the kids uh, get I too to much earn. money too quickly. Right. Whereas you would have had to earn just your stripes to get. Right. What were you on? Seventy-two fifty. Seventy-two pound fifty. I was training with the first team. Wow. Playing with the first team. We were 42 50 first year, mm. 90 quid second year, and if you signed a pro contract, mm. and you've only really a class of pro, you just, mm. you'd seen through your two years, mm. and you're 250. I just found back yeah. then, but see the respect that me and all, all the, the apprentices, we used to get the first team boys. Aye. We used to like, just, they were Who did you look up to? Just everybody. Every, like, you used to love getting in the dressing room if you were going to pick the kit up and that, and you just used to look at them and see the way they trained and the way they, 
I mean, see the way they train. It was their last, their last ever training session. Mm. They trained the way they wanted to play, and I just took that with me. Who was in the dressing room when you were a young, young kid? Look, like, what, when I was an apprentice? Uh-huh. McCoy's Durant, Ian Ferguson, Stuart McCall's, Goffs, Loudrop's, Gazers, all these sort of guys. And you just used to look at them and think, that's what I want to be like. I want mm. to be, have that sort of mentality. Because you used to come in, see if they get beat in a five a side. They'd been here in a fucking boxing with each other. Love that. Because they get beat. You never track, you never tracked your runner. We lost a goal in the last 30 seconds. That's training. Yeah. I thought to myself, that's what you need to do if you want to go to the top. That's the way you've got to be. But that's that's you watching that, seeing it first hand, and you registered saying, well, if that's what they're doing, then I must need to do that to get to that level. Oh, Whereas yeah. <clears throat> nowadays the kids are in dressing rooms, but they're not even in dressing rooms because they're not allowed to get in for whatever reasons. I usually not allowed in here, but they're not even a fucking allowed to live goalposts and stuff. Yeah. So I used like, to love going in the first team, even oh, if they came to me. Brilliant, oh, wasn't brilliant. It? You wanted to get came because you felt they liked you. Liked you then, didn't they? Brilliant uh, feeling. See, sorry, Kevin. See, see, when you went into uh, the first team, did you, um, would you moan it boys right away? I, I, I get put right, I, I, get, too, crazy, this. I get took out of school at 15 because I, I, I never done anything at school to be fair, I was always getting in trouble all the time. Um, either no going or whatever I was doing, like maybe scrapping in school. So they took me out early, I went out at 15, the start of fourth year I left. I went in full time and I was training with the first team maybe, I got to about 16. So I, I, I was still giving me the ball. I want to be quiet around about them. Yeah. And then you could see them looking and thinking, who's this wee guy? Who's Did anyone ever say you piped in me, man? Aye, quite a few of them. Who would you, who would... But they, they seen, they were brilliant with me because they gave me loads of information and loads of help. But also, they're like, this wee guy's not coming in to take my place. So, mm-hmm. seeing training, I'm going to think twice, they'll get right through me. Blitting, 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 I yeah. loved that. But back then, it was reserves as well because if the squad at Rangers was 20, four 25 players that reserve team we had i mean we'd, i'd be playing in the middle of the park with their auntie charlie muller ian ferguson wow players of course they would be up is front Ferg- was he not a screwball ian ferguson aye but he was he was a good player hmm. so see if even they were suspended in the saturday they would still play with the reserves on the monday so you were playing with these guys that had played three four hundred games and you were sitting in their dressing room and then you were on a pitch with them and you just I, I always i was like a sponge hmm. I was a sponge when I was younger. Still a sponge, you know. I don't think you ever stopped learning. I and that's, that's why I was saying thing mentality. You need a sponge, sorry. But. I, and that's why I was saying to you about going and visiting clubs, going to see different things with managers. I loved doing that. Yeah. See the way they, they prepare and all that. Did you ever get a beer with Gaza? Aye, Gaza was brilliant, mate. Do, do you know what? See the thing that I loved about him? See, when you were an apprentice, we'd always walk, we would always be in the boot room, which was across for the, you know, the old boot room, it was across for the, we used to all sit in there, all the apprentices. He would come out and come in and spend five minutes with the boys. How'd you go on a youth team game? How'd you play? Did you score a goal? I was like, ah, it's fucking Gaza speaking here, man. Uh, He's taking time out to come and speak. What was he like in training or that? Did he take it serious? One of the best trainers I've ever uh, seen. Was he? Unbelievable. Wow. Unbelievable. Where did you go for a pint on? In the tin? Uh, we went to a place, a Steps Bar. Steps Bar, I don't know. It's like an old, old man's pub. Near the, near the, uh, we cruise us. Oh, All right, did you so much, uh, I know what you're talking about. Uh, right. But I was only, si- I was only 16, I wasn't meant to be drinking myself. Was it just <laughs> you and him? No, I had like team, like team night suit. So. Uh-huh. Yeah, but what, what a guy, man. Some trainer, I can't believe that. Frightening trainer. See, Frightening I always thought trainer. if you had to be a character, you had to keep it up and train it's not fucking booting zing balls about anybody. But he was fucking no, That was the biggest it. thing that jumped out at me about that team. That's what I learnt. The way they trained was the way that they wanted to play on a Saturday. Was McCoy's funny? Aye. Aye, but what a trainer he was, I know. Hard as nails. I had Jimmy Nichols says that he used to fight all the time. Aye, mate, hard as nails. They were all like that, but they wouldn't, listen, see, they wouldn't mind scrapping each other in training. And Did you're you only a wee 15, 16 year old boy looking and what's going on here? Did you ever have any big fights with any of them? You remember like, scrapping anything? No, it's 16, 17, but I had plenty. I have a I said, don't you tell us, mummy, a wee bit older how you fought with. Who I fought with? Aye, in Rangers team. I fought with a few, big ammo. But I had to use a boot when I was fighting the big guy. He's a big oh, body, isn't he? He is a unit, man. Uh, did you still go on, Listen, I wait. I think he's quite arrogant, isn't he? And I think when you have like you coming up and saying, I want that. I want the Whereas no, he wants no. it, not at all. It, it wasn't like that. Listen, we had total respect during, see like the games and all, we'd fight. 
tooth and nail in terms of making sure we won and all that. Did we see I half the pitch? No, we didn't. But see if you go and ask any players, some players you go on with, some players you don't go on with. Yeah. But he was he was a, a phenomenal player, him. Was he? Aye, by the way, he was. What uh, just pinging it about? Aye. Great defender, I know. Right. Great defender. Under him and Craig Moore together were. Craig Moore was a dirty Mate, We were talking there. yesterday, weren't we, about the Celtic team and Rangers team back then. Like, I'm not going to... It was up there with the... No, the elite in Europe, but behind, below that, that's how high the standard was. They, the Celtic two te- they two teams could easily compete with the best. Yeah. The late 90s, early 2000s. Who was your hardest player to play against for Celtic? What a question. Sorry to keep on peppering. Is that all right, Si? No, go for Fine. it. That's what he's here for. I've only got him one time. I just uh, want to... Pick your brain today. What, who did they have the best battles? Aye, so the last thing would be the number one. Who did you enjoy looking for against Slane when you were your own form turned up? Who did you think, oh, I hope he's playing the day? It, it was probably because he was a captain as well. We had right dinged up, was Lenny. Did uh, you fight I, on the pitch? Aye, but I tell you, we got one off the pitch, total respect half the aye. pitch. But you know what it's like, you cross that white line, he's mad Celtic, I'm mad Rangers, you just want to kill each other. Uh-huh. But see, after it, Bumped into him plenty of times, had a pint with him, there's no issues at all. No see, when you see these young kids now, like, no kids, but 23, 24 year olds playing for Celtic and Rangers, like, people who have been linked to moves, does it baffle you that they want to leave clubs like Celtic and Rangers so early in their career? I, I would rather they, they stay in the... They do, you don't realise how big they are until you actually leave. How was that, it? That's just the track needing to win every week? I, I just felt the pressure was... I loved the pressure of having to win every single week. When I went back down to the Premier League, or when I went down to the Premier League twice, you're coming off and you're maybe drawing a game. Mm-hmm. And the fans are clapping you and I'm like, ah, mate, that's not good enough. Mm. But up there it's win. A draw is all right, see a defeat. Oof. You probably answered your own thing there, Si. They want to leave because the pressure's probably too much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Think so, eh? I, honestly, <clears throat> it's like... And money like, now plays a big money, part of that. But, if you think a 23 year old that sells it and then maybe getting say 15, 20 grand a week, is he going away really to enhance his wages that much that it's fucking game changing? He might go and get 30 grand a week, 35 grand a week. He's not going for 15, 20 grand a week to 100 grand a week, I wouldn't oh, imagine. Mm. So the pressure of playing for Celtic in this Glasgow bubble or Rangers, it's fucking no easy. See, like, like for instance, Kieran Tierney, I think he was ready to go. He'd ah. won so many yeah. trophies. Yeah. He'd already been there and done Was that it. a stage you were at when you left? Similar stage Aye, but I, I mean, uh, I probably, in a, in a way, it was Rangers had to get money in quickly because at that time then it was starting to change a bit. Yeah. It was starting to struggle a bit. Um, I could have went to another few clubs, but I chose Blackburn for... I wanted to play under Sunnis. He was a phenomenal midfielder. I well, Sunnis, like, is a guy you can see on that Sky Sports. I love listening to Just straight. That just, I want to say scary. Just straight down the middle. See, if you don't do it, you're told straight. I like that. I don't like managers that will come in and get around about it. You know what I mean? He was just, that's not good enough. Yeah. If you, another one or two performances like that, you'll not play here. Did he ever say that to you? Aye, aye. And would you give him a bit back? No, I'd just look at him. Well, Right, fair enough. So you, then you knew you had to go and work harder. He dropped me. I had a poor game. I, think, I can't remember who it was. Was it Aston Villa or West Ham? Uh, he would. And then we went to play Leeds at Ellen Road. He dropped me. Never told me. And I was like, ah, expecting to play. Because obviously I spent a few quid yeah. on this. Comes in, puts the t- team up. And I'm like, ah. I need to properly, I need to fucking step it up here. But that was again, that's something I used that in a positive way. I had to go and make sure when he, he put me on, I think, the last half hour, I was everywhere. Mm. And then in, in that training week, man, I was I trained as hard as I could to make sure I was back in that starting 11. Mm. And it's easy just to say, right, you know what, you're on all right, man, you're on good money. Ah, my chance will come four or five weeks down the line. No, I need to play. Play it. <clears throat> I need to play. Is that why you down tools at Clyde? Was there a bigger offer on the table? Absolutely. A Dutch team. You can't stole that joke, didn't I? You feel like when you say they're obviously Rangers needed the money, right? That's understandable. Did you have a wee bit inside you that thought, I need to go and prove myself in Scotland. I've done everything in Scotland and European football with the Champions League and stuff. Did you feel a wee bit inside you thinking, if I get in here, I'm going to shoot them. I'm going to... I had a bit of that, Kev, but... Because at that time, for me, 
it was great to see Scottish best players come to the mm. Premiership because even to this day we still get oh that Scottish fucking leaves a lot of shite. The players aren't good enough. To play I, I cra- it cracks me. And up. whereas you come down and to me and you played with me, Mickey Gray, who oh, I played with Sunderland. He used to fucking say he's one of the best midfielders in this league. Mm. And yet you had all the guys and all the teams and like. Well, you know what it's like. You. See, the clubs doing there. It used to. I used to get into so many arguments with it. With the boys, they, they used to just ditch Scottish foot. But now you're seeing Tierney going down doing really well, Robertson, McGinn, Armstrong. Armstrong. Uh, it's brilliant to see because they, they think it, they treat up here as can some sort of backwater, shitty players, shitty league. It's not. It's a difficult league to play in up mm-hmm. here. I've seen loads of players come, and they spend a fortune on them, and they're like that. Fucking hell, man! The pace of the game, the pressure you're under. So it's great to see boys going down there and, and shutting a lot of people up. You left on deadline day, didn't you? I played Champions League qualifier and then I left the, the following day. And what, did it you not know that day that you were gone? I, I knew that, I knew that well, when you were playing the game, the game? Well, no, during the game, before the game, I knew that all the deal was done. Was that a strange plan knowing that you were away? No, I knew, but I'd still go. I, listen, you've still got a chance you're good and you can snap your, your ankle or your knee. Oh, yeah. But I, I wasn't caring, I was wanting to go and play. And make sure I, I help Rangers get through, and they did get through. Who was that under? McLeish. McLeish, eh? Yeah, uh, McLeish. And then the next morning, you just got in your motor and drove to a Blackburn. Aye. Is it sad, eh? It was sad because, in, in a way, like Big Kev said there, I wanted to go and prove that I could compete with the best, but also it was it's my club. Rangers was my my team, and it was a hard one. I was caught between Rangers needing the money. Aye. And me want to go down to the best league. That's the Tierney, isn't it? Mm, similar, similar situation. Aye. That. Aye, but I just did felt. You cry? Did you cry? No, nah. no. You're not like that, you know. No, you just you're see tough. like Kieran Tierney. I think Kieran Tierney's a bit different in terms of he won loads at an early age. Yeah. I still, I, he'll come back to Celtic at Aye. some stage. I think. Would you ever think you would come back to Rangers? But because of what happened to Rangers. Did you think we've been here for three years and I might just see the last couple of years? Rangers, did you ever think that? No, I, I never. No, once I left, I, I thought it would never happen again. Because you know what people say, never go back. Never go back. And then I get the bad injury. I come through that and then I was captain again. Play, started playing really well. Soon as went to Newcastle, Mark Hughes came in. Mark Hughes was brilliant. Was he? Was he? Oh, he's Clint Hill kind of when I interviewed him. No, I. Clint Hill says he never spoke. Yeah, I, I've seen that. His training was unbelievable, mate. Was it? Loved it. Loved it. I thought he was really good. Wanted to keep me. Then a few clubs came in for me, and then out the blue, I get a, a phone call for Rangers saying, "Would you come back?" Who? Alec McLeish. Or uh, the the directors at that time. And then it was just the Paul again. It's that's your team you supported. I just bent everybody else and says I'm going back. Do you know why I stayed in, in England? I, I could have stayed in. I could have stayed in, but when you cl- when Rangers come... See, when we talk about Alex McLeish, pull. do you feel like you're sitting next to him right now? Mad, they look like him, don't they? See, yeah. the interview, mate, even his nose is a wee bit bent like me. See, it's the first time I met you. <laughs> I've said on that podcast that the first time I met you. <laughs> you look at Alex McLeish. Did you? Aye. 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 Uh, Good, good, good guy. guy I told you, you Aye. were a wee bit unsure. Yeah. Aye, maybe, a guy, maybe a legend. Big Aye. Charlie McGrew speaks very well. Oh, Big Charlie, I loved him when he was Aye, a he's legend, amazing. Aye. Aye. You know, get, man's on it. Aye. Don't get on the wrong side of him, I know. But yeah, but he, what's the worst you've seen him on the wrong side? Was it Loving Crins? Aye. What's what he happened? Came Just wow. came in and we were having a pop. We were all having a pop with each other. And then the gaffer had a pop at Loving Crins and I can just picked him up. Like a bit of fucking paper. And just dropped him. How was Loving Cans chirping? No, that was the first time I heard him say it. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's normally quite quiet, Peter. So he, he lost the plot a wee bit. I can't remember if he grabbed and he lifted it. He done, he, he went, and see when the gaffer went, ape shit, you, you sat back down, he's a big guy. Yeah. Wouldn't he mess about him? Did you and him ever hear? Aye, we had a few ding dongs, aye. Do you remember one? He must have, you know, said yeah. I think he said, he said, I think he said a couple, huh? Aye, he had a few ding dongs, aye. Where it, but there was respect, I mean, at the end of the day, there comes a, a line you can't cross with a manager, you just say, oh, right, that's me. Yeah. You take him so, so far and then you take a step so back. So you them, Walter Smith, McLeish, Sunnis, I know for a fact who's the scariest, Walter Smith. Aye. Isn't it? I've been in the wrong end of him. What, what game is that? 
No, with the, with the, the Scotland thing. Aye, uh, just straight again. Uh, and that's what I liked about people. Just brought me in and he's like, ah, that's it. See, that Scotland thing, it was, uh, you, you were telling his totals last night? No, it wasn't it the fans or anything? Uh-huh. It was, was to what, a wee photographer? I thought it was to me, I know. I was like, I put one of these gimp masks on. <laughs> oh, it, was to, it was to the photographers that were hanging about outside in the hotel all the time, trying to take photos for no reason. And then they were sitting in front of you, in front of you at the game? Aye. Uh-huh. So all this shite about it was to the fans, it was nonsense. I, I love playing me. with Scotland. See, at the end of the day, it, it killed my, my Rangers career and my Scotland career. That was it, done. Yeah. So I had to go away and reinvent myself. Yeah. Do you ever give anyone any signals in the stand? Like if you were playing, your dad was up in the stand there. I slaughter them, eh? One of the fans, not seeing us with him up and I was the third something they got on. I was like, fuck off, you know, that to fans. That didn't even hatter me, I've just made that a lot. Not <laughs> 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 fair, no. He, he's obviously a season bit colder at part. It's yeah. like, uh, Is he? Aye. I know where he sits. Obviously, playing the old firm a couple of times, you have a wee look up. And the ball went out, and all the fans are getting me for hey, you, you fucking, he's getting me fucking that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you're my fair, <laughs> So right. he felt that when everybody started doing it, he says, I couldn't sit down, I had to just join in. <laughs> like, ah, fuck you. Would your dad go and watch you at Ibrox? Uh, he stopped. Why? Because uh, he getting a bit of grief at times. When things are not going well, you're the one that'll get it because you're Scottish or you're the captain. Yeah. But I try to tell my dad, listen, that's something I, I can cope with that. But my dad couldn't, he was wanting to turn around and have a pop at people. Yeah. And I didn't want something happening in the storm, you know what I mean? My dad used to say the same. Way. My mates as well. My mates used to get involved in. Because they always try to stick up for you, yeah. right? And my dad used to say, that, oh, my mum my my would say to me, my dad was arguing that after mm. the game, so I'd come home with some of the fans, and I was like, oh, you just got to leave it be, you know, but. What they're shouting at you, I'm like, I know, but that's just football, that was nice. Yeah, I know. It, it would never stop my dad, no coming. Aye. It's a, it was sad, but I just didn't want my dad getting involved in nah, and, and shit. And then my mates were getting involved and there was like a bit of shouting and bawling and all that. And I'm like, look, dad, just leave just it leave out. It, eh? Aye. Did your dad fight fans for you? I, mean, did I, did, I had to tell my dad to stop coming, but he used to come with this wee grey Volkswagen, it was fucking tiny. <laughs> So see the motors with three wheels? <laughs> it was four wheels, but that was the size of it. And my family, there's me, my brother and sister, my man and dad, and we're all fucking, when we were younger, pure fire ginger heads. So at five gins, we're all stuck in this motor, mate. Oh, it was embarrassing. So all the boys used to see us driving in. And I was just like, Dad, you need to stay away for the game. So, mate, you can't turn up in that wee motor. But they were supporting, your mum and dad were proper supportive of you, weren't they? Very supportive, Si. Um, but your dad, when you look up to your dad, you want him to inspire you. We guys sitting there crouched doing eating a pie, you're like, oh, he ain't inspired me now. How many times George can afford to fucking do the fucking... <laughs> <laughs> uh, Alex McLeish told us as well last night, I got it wrong, I said it was when you were Rangers, it was when you were at Blackburn, Alex Ferguson was thinking about taking you. I know, because see when you say the Rangers thing? Uh, it wasn't right. Aye. So was it Blackburn? Or did you know about this? Aye, I, 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 I kind of knew about it, but I knew that they were and the clubs were, were looking but I, I said to you last night you thought I was trying to change the subject I just let that go on my head I knew there's interest but until somebody actually comes and says look we want you to sign and How was there a time at Blackburn where you were absolutely flying uh-huh. can you remember a wee spell where you were I, I'd, I'd well. settled in pretty quick but we had a lot of good players si. mm. we had a good team who else was, who else was good was Benny two McCarthy guys, two guys two guys oh, two guys two guys who was you the big boy at the back Neil Lucas, Lucas Neil, Neil Chris Samba Aye, Brad Friedel was a goalkeeper Friedel, oh, what a keeper Mike Gray left back Mike, uh, I tell you what, fittest guy in the world Fittest guy in the world, only guy I ever knew that could run, run the beep tip Aye, I'm just about to say that, he done that at Blackburn What, he ran out the bleep tip? Aye Beep test finished, beep test finished and he's still fucking running Wow You know the bleep test champion? No, Aye. my fuck the, Oh, but Peter Eddie, but that's the name Then we up front we had York and Cole Oh, oh wow How are they two? Ah, oh, they were, mate do you, you could see they were maybe 30, 31 at that time. Man, you obviously get rid of them thinking they were finished, but could they sco- Cool. I've never seen them finish like that in my life. I think Cole's underrated, eh? Mate, really get to it, is see, it? Like, technically, he wasn't he great. I think York's better than Cole. Aye, technically. Aye, technically. Aye, but in the box, Andy Cole, whoa. Newcastle. And the wee boy, I don't know, you remember him? David, David Tom's, Tom's uh, by David the way. David Tom's, he's Liverpool. Yeah. 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 Hey, what a player he was. He'd the chop. Mm-hmm. He'd fucking go one way and chop him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. He never hardly trained, he had a, a knee problem. But we had a right good team. 
Uh, but you've told me before, was it Sunni smash York ahead? Aye. How yeah. good's that? That's just Sunni, isn't it? So what was it because of just that they weren't getting on? I just, I think they weren't seeing eye to eye and as soon as they decided to two fit them. And they are. On a five or six. That's brilliant, isn't it? Would you like to say anything? No, probably haven't said anything to Sunni. What's the worst you've seen him go? Eh... Uh, I've seen a few, like, in terms of what, like going and, and fighting with people. Uh -huh. No, he's just, do you know what he done? He just, the dagger looked straight, tell you you're not good enough. He just finish it. Yeah. I like honesty, but uh -huh. I don't, a lot of people can't handle that. That's what I liked about Sunnis. And they were all like that kind of Walter Smith was a bit like that. Walter Smith is scary, isn't he? Oh, aye. Good manager, I, I but. Went to the Rangers, I said to he didn't coach, but didn't he? No, sorry, Kev. He only done this uh, shape. I said to the boys, what's the difference between Walter? I think it was the big jig and that, the ones that have been there before. Mm. What's the difference between Ali and Walter's managers? He says, see when Ali walks in there, we have you joke to laugh, we have you game of darts, and I said, see when Walter walks in. Just, see, you could, you could be sitting like that in the, the back you do the video. See, as soon as he walks in, everybody just pulls a chair and you just Aye. sit like that, because he, he brings that aura with him. Yeah. But, would anyone ever have a go back at Walter Smith? Anyone nah. brave enough? Never. Do you ever not? Never in all that time, not one person. No. But if he came to you, you wouldn't have said it back to him? I if you felt he was in the ring? Well, maybe I've said some <laughs> lately, but, but no, no, like... Uh -huh. Would you ever have a meeting where he would, he would go through whatever he had to go and say you didn't, didn't agree with what he had to say? Would you no, he was all right. Way, no, he, he, he'd be all right that way. He would take your opinion as uh, well, yeah. which I quite liked about him. But see, tactically, not that, he was brilliant. Was he? Oh, brilliant, tactically. I mean, you've seen with the... Europe. Yeah, up, aye, but even with the... Remember the Scotland team? Yeah. He had... Aye. Where we weren't great to watch, but we were hard to beat. Hard to beat. And he just knew about why he set us up. He was brilliant that way. Uh, amazing. McLeish also said last night about... Uh, can he join Latipi? Like the fag before the game? <laughs> what, were they, what were they two like? Oh, brilliant. Latipi was brilliant, wasn't he? Mate, oh, what a player. What a player. Unbelievable. I just... The wee man was just trippy, a typical Caribbean, isn't he? Just everything was laid back, but ability wise, fucking hell. Could he have played like higher than what he Aye, did? Aye, easy. He, he could have been done and played at the highest level in England with his ability. Yogi said that. Yogi says that Lattapy could have played to Man United, didn't he? Easy. Easy. What position was he? Centre, kind of off the Kind of aye, but he, he, he could tunnel the ball, left, right, fit. He's just magic wee fat a player. Magic Would he be a nightmare to play with, but. If defensively, no. No, you, you, you could game a wee bit and it would work. It was just trying to wind them up at times, you know what I mean? Mm. But see, game the ball, fuck, you could take it either side. Canidia, I mean, you're playing with a guy who played World Cups. Best physique I've ever seen in a fighter player. Is he? Oh, bowl like a brick shit house. Just he ripped. Like not ripped, mate. Looks like a wee woman in the ring going, didn't he? See if you drew a perfect body. As an athlete, draw him. Wow. wow. Be amazing, wasn't it? What a player. What a player. Was it well. Alberts like the fag as well, didn't he? Aye. Aye loads of them like the fag. That, that was kind of their culture, the, the foreign. Uh, they could train all day, but they could run all day. What, uh, was there any at Sunderland that liked the wee? What, like a wee fag? Uh -huh. uh, Julio Arca looked like he'd smoked about eight to a day. Ah, uh, no, that was. He usually picked that usual suspect, not like Alan McGregor. No Sunderland, but I remember Greasy liked the wee draw. People when they get a wee drink in them side, people like I'll a wee fag. things, but yeah, love a wee fag. Yeah. Oh, I feel brilliant. Regal, yeah. you're a regal yeah. man. Regal, I twelve regal. I <laughs> love that. Twelve regal. Is that you right? don't get twelve regal. <laughs> <laughs> well, I see the finger nails. Look at his finger nails. They're a smoker. Well, they're shooting. <laughs> I can't. Do you like a fag? Oh, oh, fag. Oh, 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 fag. Oh, oh, fag. I don't drink now, but I still like a wee fag. I always get it because it's fucking hell. Me, my still thought I'm coming up for my thirty fifth birthday next week, and we still stay my man there. <laughs> and I love going out the back garden and having a wee fag and she, so she kind of sees. Who, you and your brother? Aye, we go a wee fag too, so we all do it. I gave him off and he takes <laughs> off. <laughs> oh, you know, you, you used to take the snooze, didn't it? I can't stop the snooze, mate. Can I get off it? Because I don't sleep, mate, and just barking. I've been watching the Game of Thrones now, mate, and there's, it's unreal. I keep, there's all sorts of sh uh, shagging scenes, and every time I, 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 you know, I put two snooze up and watch it, and just, oh, mate, I'm flying. <laughs> <I don't laughs> what snooze you taking? The killer. I was on the Siberia, but it smells honking. Mm. It makes me feel sick after a fag, and then I put two in. And, uh, but the killer's brilliant, man. Ah, oh, I just chilled me right out. <laughs> uh, right, yeah, do you play, so, do you play uh, snooker or anything? 
because I'm very tight with John Higgins and he's Mate, saying, he was he's tight with Higgins oh, as well. Yeah. I was saying so listen, I'll neighbor he's a thought, I'll sort it out. He's a good guy, isn't he? Nah, top man. One of the best. Nah, he's a good top guy. Here we went up and he was doing for a band four seven or that. But anyway, we'll sort it me, you, Higgins. Used to we got for a wee game of snooker. Mm-hmm. We good, wasn't it? Pool, you know, like pool. I'm, Pool's mate, better. I'm unreal. Aye, pool. I like pool. I like pool. Snooker's too big. Aye. You had to stop Higgins and Bob rolling about with each other, didn't you? Aye, you did, look, uh, it was after a right few jars, wasn't Brilliant, it? Man. But I like John Higgins and bumped into him a couple of times. I yeah. spoke very highly of him. He did. Uh, we'll talk a wee bit about nights out. Everyone that we've had on that's played with this guy says he's mental. Do you play up Stephen Thompson? I was oh, in Crack the... pop, man. That's mad to think, can't Can I just say before about a night out? Under, he was underrated. I Who, thought. Stephen Top? No. no. What, as a player? I thought he was good. Was he? Mm-hmm. He came and he done a great job for Rangers. How did you hear the story he told about his first day with the Boer? I was there. What, you in the queue? <laughs> Mate, I was laughing. I was actually on the deck, killing myself. <laughs> first one, it was just a simple, no, the why. Why passing the it and back up? Uh-huh. No, the Dutch were big on that, so we would maybe date like 15 Bigger yards. Bigger than that, not. <laughs> 30, 30 yards, 45 yards. <laughs> so we'd done, the wee one obviously, the 15 yards just the side fit. And then instead of going to 30, we went a longer one. So obviously Tom almost found himself at the, the queue. The people the Boers at the side of him. And big, you no, know, Ronnie, technically fucking unbelievable. So I think it was Jan Vouters. Aye was laying it and then you had to ping it. First ping, fucking, honestly, fucking went about 30 yards for the player was meant to be. Just a, a basic What did he curly to it? Oh, curly to big time. Uh-huh. banana feet, man. <laughs> second one, second one he's went and he's just done the total opposite, but it's went the opposite way to the first one. Oh, that's oh. horrible, And then the third one just, it was... And what's the oh. bear gave it? What is this? No, he done, he done that. Who is this? <laughs> 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 we 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 sign this player. <laughs> ah yeah, he's a Scottish international. He no football player. <laughs> was no, that, like, I didn't that that that, yeah. Yeah. Oh, but Big Tomo never never bothered. But I tell you, he done some job for Rangers, Tomo. Did he? Eh? Ah, he, he, tell you, done great for us. What about you? Talk was it a night out? Did you not smash a glass or something? Ah, not case, man. Not case. Where was it? I think we'd won the league. And we're just all sitting having a, a drink and just behind them all, I just fucking started throwing smashing glasses after the ball behind us. I'm like, what are you doing, mate? I'm going to get chucked out of here. What are you I'm trying to sit in the corner and be quiet so nobody finds us. He's smashing glasses off a ball, but uh, there's loads of things about him, night suit, man. Not, that? Not, not a case, man. What about yeah. a Ranger suit? Who else was good for a night out? Who was your favourite? Who was a good laugh? Who was the, the what the maddest? Uh-huh. It was Rickson. How what would he want night suit? I uh, just a, a madman. Aye. Do what? Just he was crazy. Just like jump. Just did that thing, jump about and just annoy people. And he was sad, obviously, but what happened with his illness and whatever. Yeah. But he was a he was the life and soul of a night out. Just mad. Yeah. Just crazy. Just hyperactive. You know what I mean? Always like. Moving about, he couldn't sit and have a drink. He would be up walking about everywhere. Some player as well, wasn't he? Was he some player? Yeah, he was good. Was he? He was, he was good. He was very a fast, wasn't he? Very fit. Yeah. Again, one of the fittest, like a kind of Mickey Gray type fitness. Yeah, he was tough, like, wasn't he? <laughs> Remember him and Thompson used to have battles every old film? No. Do you not put a firework through Thomas' letterbox? No. Is that definitely happening? Aye, he put Does a he? firework through so fire. He used to do everything. <laughs> my, my, I mean, surely Big McLeish, did they know? Yeah, he was saying about flinging directors in pools and all that. Huh? I fl- flung the, the chairman, it was. He flung him in the pool. <laughs> the chairman was just on in his shirt and everything, suit on. Like in big Rolex, he just launched him straight in the pool. Who was the chairman? And he couldn't swim. John McClellan couldn't swim. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, guy couldn't swim. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. Uh, in your original interview as well, mate, we mentioned your brother Derek. What a guy. What a guy, man. Aye. How good is he? At? The best He's guy. He's one of my favourite people. Yeah, I'm going to be He can't drink, Barry. He can't drink. He gives it a good go, yeah. sir. Ah, yeah, he'll okay, get a good bar. Last year, when we went to the front. But I think he'd been drinking on the train on the way. He was on the train, mate. But what was he drinking? Well, we're thinking, <laughs> right, he says, What are you drinking, big man? I was trying to anything. I says, Terence or cider, I'll just go with it. And he says, Right. So I was ordering like, maybe a pint of Terence, then with a pint of cider, Terence. So we had about. Maybe five or six rapid within an hour just before to go rushing. 
And obviously the producer's texting me saying, mate, I use the shows on in 10 minutes. So I said, Derek, we need to go. He says, oh, we've got time for two more. I says, right, okay, so we're an half too quick. <laughs> so the time arrived up at the fringe. Derek couldn't even speak. Uh, he was gone. <laughs> he actually, he couldn't speak. And actually, he was right, a waste of In front of what kind of crowd? Oh, three, what, four, three hundred, four hundred. He couldn't speak. And then he actually, like, after the show, he came off. He says, boys, I'm, I'm really sorry. He fucking disappeared. What a guy. Do you know what? It's even my first time I met him. I was thinking, nah, he's not fair. Nah, no. I would have been there. Yeah. Uh, well, oh, yeah. I see my first time I met him on the Coop show, see after the show, he came up to me and went, see if you ever need it in pal. Here's my number. How how classy is that? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That Did just he sums him up. It? He wouldn't have done that. No, I wouldn't <laughs> fucking give you my number. <laughs> <laughs> Did you, was it you that texted me for his number? I text, I text you last week, I, would, I? I grilled him, I was like, never gave my number out to Slaney. <laughs> Raising. See, how, how amazing was it though, being a Rangers fan, when you're growing up and your brother's playing with Rangers, uh, I don't think I ever get spoken about. Uh, you. He was he was like my hero. Like, uh, there's ten years between us. He goes in and starts playing with Rangers. Obviously, going watch him with my dad. Uh, you just want to be with your brother is. Is he brilliant? Him and him and Durante were frightening. What the hell? Sixteen, seventeen year old, they were unbelievable. I think if you ask any Rangers supporter that if you went and watched them when they were younger, two of them were frightening together. Frightening. Would he be bringing like first team players back to your house and that when you were young? Guy? I used to take him into it. When he was like 18, 19, I would have been all obviously eight or nine. Like on a Sunday, yeah. they were always, as soon as we'd have them in on a Sunday, as like a kind of warm And they would always take me in and I'd be running about all the players. Was going was watching. Was ah, it was brilliant for us. For like, I always say it because I've got boys, right? But and you'll notice it as well. See the second child, he's always the better fit player than the, the, the oldest one because they've got a lot to learn. Aye. And they see what they're doing wrong and they mm. always think the second child. So I'm thinking that you, being brought up in that environment, your brother being a professional fair player at Rangers at nine years old, what mere drive do you need? Whereas some kids have nothing uh, to yeah, do. It'd it be fair, it did. It just drove me on. I just wanted to be like him. Aye. I wanted to be better than him. And I knew that I had to work hard to be better than him, you know what I mean? Because he was successful, he was a right good player. Yeah. Right good player. I think if you ask anybody that back in that era that watched football, they would all say the same thing about Derek. Clubs, look at the clubs, Rangers, Hearts, Sunderland. Yeah. They played the good teams. Yeah, that's yeah. That's what did your brother do for that's you? What, that's what me and my big brother, we're t- actually every summer tip for a big move about the Maz house. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> still there. Two's <laughs> are still there, son. Is he on the CBD as well? He's brother? on the CBD. I give him a wee bit. He doesn't like it. He gets all that. How, how, how did you go on with that CBD oil? <laughs> Mate, I, I, to be fair, I've took that much now. I'm that far gone, so it doesn't really give me a hit, to be fair. No. What no. milligram are you on? 1,200. <laughs> That's, that's no song, you get 2,300. How do you know about this? How do you know about this? Because I get, I get sent it for a guy, one of my, um, he was like a kind of sports science guy I used last year, he started working with him. And I wasn't too sure on it. And my auntie's got arthritis, so I was like, give me a wee bit of maybe my auntie can try it, but yeah. she's got bad arthritis. And I tried it, I didn't feel it made a difference. Nah, we could set up our own business by the way, couldn't we? Aye. CBD. <laughs> a real man. What does the brother do, Sonny? He's, um. I want to brew or not. <laughs> 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 so I was trying to make a job up there, but I couldn't find it. Oh, brilliant. Oh, so see when you first... I get a job in. Listen, I, I promise, I'll not let you down. Listen, I won't let you down. What I'm going to do is, do the kit, help you a wee bit tactically as well. No, you don't need the help, but I'll just offer my opinion in you. And Dean's, what formation would you play? Well, I'm what, a, what formation do you like? I'm a 4 2 three, one. I don't like three five two. 5 2 It's working for Celtic. I'm not a big fan of it because what I'm going to say is three centre halves. You've seen last night the spaces for the full backs. Salah Mane came in, leaves huge gaps for the full backs to bomb on. Can he play 3 5 2? 4 2 3 1 for me. Uh, two centre mids with the, the attacking the number 10 in, uh, behind the striker. For me, I know it's, they're kind of bringing it back in with the two up front. It's moved on. It's moved on one up. Wait, well, really, you're playing three. So you're playing one up with two guys coming in. It's two, so as Rangers play with two number 10 two, sort of two, thing. Two, two guys, and they can also go out wide, yeah. but they've got a licence to come in. I think the two up, you're, you're leaving yourself a wee bit short in the midfield. I don't think the game's moved on for that. So these dinosaurs are still going back to it. 
I mean, maybe go with the one up. Um, what was I going to say as well, Barry? I was going to say something to you as well, yeah. Don't what know. do you play, Barry? Tell me hearts. Four, two, three, one. That's exactly why I said that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it'd be fair, we've got three formations we can switch. See, sometimes you've got to have a plan B, see if it's not going well for you in a game. I can switch. The boys are starting to get into that kind of mindset. So go a four, two, three, one, three, five, two, or a four, diamond, two. Mm -hmm. So do you do you go on your formation when personnel is available for that Aye. Saturday? So because obviously boys are working part time, some make injuries are hard to. Mm -hmm. When you're not full time, it's hard to get them back on the park quicker. So it's just all do it to your personnel. Aye. Do you uh, do you take a van or the gym? Well, I, I'll set it up in terms of I'll write it all down. Bob will go out and lay everything. Oh, you need to read it to Bob, obviously. Aye. I, I tell you, you just came on, but didn't you? Uh, Bob. Bob's Good time, Bob. You said that. Uh, huh? Brilliant. Good ideas about the game. Yeah, you know. You, I, I've always said about Bobby gets a bit of. A, he likes. He doesn't mind that you slagging him. Ah, he's like, like, he no, a bit he's of a, a, a brilliant guy. Tell you, intelligent. Yeah. So I thought brilliant. that when I played. When I played with Bob only a couple of times. The Scotland fit ones and the future team. And I always, it was something half. And I always thought he read the game very well. That's it, like he might come across as this guy that's done mistake before. Have the see when you sit there and. When you play with a guy, mm. you know he knows what he's doing. Yeah, he's, he's, I mean, I, I've said it to Sai a few well. times. He's he's brilliant. Uh, he's brilliant for me as a right hand man. He's a type I could phone him now and say, "Go and watch our game for Saturday," or go and watch a player the night at Elgin. On a stolen problem. telly, he'd be watching that. Thought it. What? He'd be watching that on a stolen telly. <laughs> Right, are we ready? I always think that, like, the way Paul and Tim is with you, that's the way Bob is with Fergie. I think that because he does sort of. Do you keep him in a cage as well, Fergie? Do you Bob? keep Bob in a cage? Do you keep Paul and Tim in a cage? And Paul and Tim well, sometimes a mumbles a bit as well, but Bob does as well. So to the mumble a wee bit, but listen, Bob's came on, he speaks properly now. Um, <laughs> Barry, what I was going to say is, combined 11 Celtic Rangers, here you go, in goals, Alan McGregor, right back, Frimpong. Oh, don't start that Well, Barry, shit. I listen, I, I put myself right, you there. you did go. Oh, in, uh, in this goal. is your job interview here we go if, I, if you like it that's what I'm going to say Alan McGregor in goal Frimpong right back I'll go with Ayer and Duffy see to be fair on Duffy now I, I, he's got a big hype coming sort yourself out because the boy oh, Nisbet wow. flung it to Grun that, and I, that's, that's poor he's <laughs> rang side him about three times that's no He's, he's there. I wonder what his own inside has he. <laughs> I love oh, you. So do we. Oh. I love when oh, you get into that with me. I love when he gets a bit angry with me. Who's your, who's your left back? Left back, Barisic. It's got to be it. Taylor's good defender going forward. No so much, but he can work on it. Barisic for me. Two centre midfielders. Think Barisic is good defensively. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> right, Barry. And uh, centre mids, Scott Brown, McGregor. There's no better player than Scott Brown. I know for him. Uh, he's done it time and time again. Um, Cal McGregor, re ready for this one? Best centre midfield in Scotland by a country mile. Wow. There we go. I will go Forrest on the right. Left, I'll go uh, Kenty. Um, and then, <laughs> no, no, Barry, I, this is my problem, right? I did see a 4 2 3 1. If Are I go with 4 4 2, I'm going to go with a 4 4 2 today. <laughs> and let Just Edward did, drop in. Because, as you say, it's different personnel. Exactly, Edward, go and float about. I'm going to go for Alfredo and Edward up front. That's my team. But what I will say is, Alfredo will be on the, the, the line for David Turnbull to come in because that young boy on Saturday is the closest thing to Pirlo I've seen in a long time. Pirlo! Wait, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously, Pirlo how good is Turnbull? Pirlo! Yeah. <laughs> right, Pirlo. I tell you, he's, he's got some chance in the game. Right, he's good, uh, mate, he he's, is brilliant, yeah, that boy. He's got, he's got. Do you know what I loved about him? He took every corner, every free mm. kick. I, he wasn't but I, I, I think he's the type that's going to go in, even in the training ground, and say, give me the ball. Yeah. Demand the ball. Mm. And you need to do that. You don't want young boys going in and being shy and let other players go and do what they could do. Was he, he, would he demand the ball? Yeah. Plenty. No, you, you wouldn't, would you? <laughs> you just went, no, you no. just had. Aye. <laughs> were you I'll hide and seek champion? But he was going through tough times. Oh, we can't keep saying that on the pitch with you hide. Oh, right here. I was fucking feeling brilliant on the pitch, but I was shite my scared to get on the boss. I was hiding behind players the whole game. I loved that hiding. I was brilliant. It's <laughs> <laughs> uh, so just on your brother to see when you first broke into the first team. So where was he at Hearts? No, I played against him at Dunfermline. He was at Dunfermline. So you played, went up against him? Aye. How, how was it? We won 3-0, I scored. Did you? Aye. Were you better than him? Oh, I ran out of the him. Yeah. How would he take that? Was he devastated? I don't know. You'd ask yeah, him. We'll ask him. We'll ask Barry, him see, uh, just, this is my last question because I've peppered you today. But who did you find it harder working under, um, Paul Le Guin or Peter Martin? <laughs> <laughs> 
that's a good question. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, man. Peter Martin. <laughs> <laughs> right, Kev, we're coming to you, but Scotland. Oh, fuck, don't talk about that game, Alan. Well, so, how many games did you actually play together? Not that many, just a couple. So yeah. this is what I wanted to ask you, it's not in the script, but yeah. see when you came to Scotland and, and seen a player like him, was there players at Sunderland who put the same demands on you or was that something completely new to you? The problem try I had um, was that Sunderland got relegated. You know well, mate. Thanks, my man. <laughs> Sunderland got relegated and I'd only played like two or three fucking like debut, kind of like my debut, whatever. And all of a sudden I was being picked to play for Scotland. I was like, I've not even started a game for Sunderland. First team. So then you get up, you go in the squad. The, th the thing that, that day, that fade wire, is what you're going to talk about. You had Fergie and Paul Lambert in the middle of midfield. Scotland's probably two best centre midfielders in whatever many years. Were you worried what they thought about you? Aye, of course not. But we also had like, with more offs playing. You had me up front, you had Stephen Craney, you had. Uh, who else was playing? He was an underrated player. Aye. Stephen Craney. Solid, didn't he? Ah, see, I've got tied together, he was that slow. <laughs> the thing, what, 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 what happened to their side is a typical inexperience of, I'm presuming that, because we've got guys like him, and we've got other good players on the team, we'll walk up and we'll, we'll win the game comfortably. Yeah. And I thought, I'm young, I'm quite confident, this should be pretty straightforward. And then 10 minutes into the game, you guys, oh fucking hell, this is not quite how it's going to be mm. and then you, what you end up doing is you end up try, trying too hard that nothing comes off and then when you realise that nothing's coming off you fucking start to do what does you hide that's an ammo I don't hide when he's got the ball and he's wrapping things into you and your touches maybe not quite different because you're nervous and then you look at me and the, the, the disappointment's there and it's the, same, it's the same with Paul Lambert. Can you remember him roasting you for the first time? No, just, wouldn't you? No, it's just, he's just expecting me, <laughs> when that boss played in, he's expecting me to take that under control and get back to somebody or get in the box and get on the end of things. And I wasn't doing that. Yeah. We all just kind of just fucking collapsed and we're two nil doing it half time. Mm. And you scored, Lambo scored, we got a draw and then it's like fucking hell and then But see at half time did you take over how you Lambo? No, I we went in we went in and, and Bertie to be fair to Bertie who listen Was he as hard as he was? Like I I was he the joke? Like, I, people, no, I'll keep that for I don't know. I've got the impression that you liked him as well. I just uh, listen, it was totally different. The level and the kind of mentality in Scotland's a, a bit different for where he was before. Mm -hmm. And he came in and he kind of struggled. I think he brought too many players in. That was the problem. But he had a brilliant, he had TB was... Yeah, Tommy. Uh, I mean, Tommy Burns was a brilliant coach, man. I loved him. Mm. Loved his... So just basic. Aesthetic, he? Uh, basic uh, simple. But he came in, and I'm walking off, getting into this wee dressing room, thinking, he's getting beat to nothing to fake fishermen. And no, no disrespect, but these guys are, are just coming in off the, the boats and postmen and whatever. And we have players that are all playing at a good level. And we come in and Bertie just was in shock, wasn't he? TB says a couple of things. And then Lambo looked at me and Lambo started and then I started. And then we kind of just took it. We either start feeling sorry for ourselves here or we go and get our finger out of our yeah, arses. Aye. Put the poster up at Lisbon. Up in the wall before the game, so that's the goal. Mm -hmm. and I didn't mind that because that was the goal. We were trying to win European game. European so were you trying to shoot into that thinking it was the goal? <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> but... Like, I'm, I, I remember those, like, we talk about mental health and things and feelings the way the world is in it. I remember how that felt that day, mm. like, being 2 0 down and getting stick for the Scotland fans because I wasn't in the game. Mm. Getting pressure for teammates, which is rightly so, because we needed to do better. And fucking thinking, everything I'm doing today is just not working. I remember a cross coming in and thinking, oh, here's a goal. And just taking your eye off at the last minute and missing. You're like, oh, fucking hell, I've never missed that. And then he got a goal, and Lambo got a goal, and I think, right, 2-2, two, two, we're going to get a win in that way, yeah. But we did, they. And then, obviously, the backlash started for the Scottish media, because that's the way. What's that like? We, we, What's we that did like? say, see when we come in, right, at least we, we go, I'm saying at least, it wasn't good enough, no, it wasn't right? Good enough. wasn't good enough, but I'm saying, in, uh, in the dressing room, look, we've got to be understandable here that we're going to get absolutely ripped to shreds. Oh, I remember. Is that Be horrible? Prepared. Aye, because I had to go out and do the press. I think Lambo went out and done it as well. And they were just grilling us. 
And I was honest, listen, do you think the boys mate, it's not good enough, we know that. But we need to take the dairy. Yeah. We need to take the, the stick we're gonna get. So we either stand up, stick our chest suit and, and take the stick that we deserved, or you go and hide. And you, see then is your phone going mental, huh? Aye. Mm -hmm. that, that, that was my first experience of so I'm, the, I'm a youth team player at Sunderland. Come up through the ranks and got everyone nothing but praise all that week. Yeah. Getting the first team making my debut. And then six months later, I'm playing my first European tie for Scotland. And bang, that's my first pat lash of negative press. And that continued on for about at least six to eight weeks after the game. And that then made me feel like, <laughs> I don't want to play for Scotland. Mm. And I don't, like, I don't think... Is that what makes you feel like? I, huh? felt like, I, like I love playing in my country and it was the greatest thing I ever did in my life in, in terms of career as a football player. But... The, the backlash was incredible. Like it was fucking, it was relentless. Every time there was an opportunity for a joke, I would be there, Craig and Kyle said, because I was quite inexperienced with the media. So when we're, I, I, like, I, like I did like a joke and a laugh and I carry on, and that's the way I was around. The, even like guys at him always would carry on and have a laugh. But I used to say things like, well, oh, we're only playing fucking fishermen and fucking mm. eh, whatever they were. We'll beat these quite comfortable. Because they were semi professional back ah, then, yeah. they were professional. <coughs> but yeah. we should we should have we should have beat them. I don't think that the preparation was great. Aye. Because we stayed in a we stayed in a hotel that had a fucking grass roof with sheep fucking grazing on top of Then we had to fucking travel in a bus. <laughs> then we got a ferry that and then we got another bus Aye. to the game, whereas we should have been closer to the stadium and mm. I just think that it was um I just think we took it for granted. Aye. Us younger boys, yeah. experienced ones. But do you know yeah, what? It's funny, man, Jack, again, you got to be prepared to, when you play at that level, you've got to be prepared. You like take the praise, you know, everybody loves praise. Nobody likes getting negative press against them, but then you need to try and switch that run about. You need to try and say, right, what's the only way that we can get the, the press and the, the fans back is make sure the next game that we win. Mm. Do you know what I don't understand though? You went away, had a bad performance and got negative press, but he went away abroad, had an outstanding performance, performance and then got bad, bad press, press again. You can't win, do or don't, or do or die. <laughs> outstanding in terms of how long? How long do you last? 10 minutes, 12 minutes, and then Aye, 5 minutes. And 5 minutes, different stages of the game. I peaked, I peaked. <laughs> I certainly peaked. It's unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> Probably in the final third. <laughs> <laughs> don't let me scold the thing one side that. When my first introduction to the Scottish, the Scottish national team was in, in Hong Kong, the, the size career trip, and I'd done relatively quite well, so people were saying, oh, this kid could be the next, like, kind of big target man that Scotland will add for a number of years. Then my first game was against Denmark at Hamden, and I played quite well. We got beat, but I played well, and I got good praise, and said, so then my next game was fucking fair while, and so I'm going there with confidence. Uh, maybe too overconfident, mm. but at the same time, no playing for Sunderland weekend we could, because... I'm not a first team regular, I'm just a young guy trying to break through. I was 20 years, 20, I think I was 21, 20 years old. And it just didn't happen. And it was a learning curve. And like, I was fucking grateful for the egg boys being there that day because it was an experience. Like, Barry didn't come in and Lambo didn't come in after the game and absolutely ripped through us. Tommy Burns put an arm around and says, You mm -hmm. just need to prepare yourselves for what's coming. He says, But just forget about it, we move on, and they were full of, these things happen, and but some of the, point. Listen, we knew it wasn't good enough, but some of the criticism, it's not, I, I accept criticism all day if it's constructive, yeah. but see if it's personal, I don't like that. What's well, personal then? Like, no, if they're having a pop, it, like if they're having a pop at certain players, because me and Lamb will probably get away with it because we scored the goals, Right. but other things I thought it was a bit personal. Which it I didn't was. like. It was personal like because that. I got it at Bill, a guy, a son guy, Bill Lepi, for man, many months afterwards. That he he came for me at every opportunity. And um, a lot of the press was very, very personal enough. It fucking made me feel like, you know, I don't need this. Yeah. I've, I've got my debut, I've got a couple of caps. I'll do it. Were you one that would check like your ratings in the paper? I, the next no, day? I, never, I never used to be. But see, when you've got mates phone you all the time saying, Oh, you're in the paper day, you think, oh, I'm in the paper day for then you're like, oh, all right, okay, got it. And then even think back to like Frank, Frank who's on the show, Maka, he fucking abused you one time in the paper regarding that Fair Islands. And Did he? He, Frank, he, <laughs> he says that much. He he it. Like, now knowing Frank, like, and knowing the industry we're in, yeah. media again, this is how it works. But ultimately, this is what our national team suffer from sometimes right. because. Because it's always negative. It's always negative. Yeah. So players go away, sign, think. 
do I really need the hassle of playing for Scotland when this happens all the time? Mm. Whereas if we were positive all the time about our national team... Would huh? you, Coaching's all right. Would you here. check the, your ratings in the paper? You check page three first and then... Page three, and then I see her. And then I would rate her. Definitely. <laughs> and she would get low ratings, side with birds I could pull. Um, so I don't it. care what anybody says, every single football player checks. Checks the ratings. Of course they do. See if uh, you hear them, they say, nah, I didn't. I always checked it. Yeah. And saying, what was this? What's he saying about me? Would you ever pull, I love asking this, would, have you ever phoned a reporter because of your marker? I pulled, I, I pulled uh, Jim Trainer up after a Scotland game. Wow. Because I thought it was getting personal. Well, I, I, as I say, I can accept constructive criticism. You know when you've not played well. Yeah. Oh. And I'm sitting in that dressing room after a game and I'm thinking, right, I'm not going to get good press tomorrow. But you know what? See, both up and say, hey, that wasn't good enough for him. He's passed me as a bit slack. I'll accept that. But I found way. With Jim Trainer at that stage, it was getting a bit personal, so and I didn't like it. No, I, I seen him at a Scotland game. I walked off the bus and pulled him. He must have shit. <laughs> what did he say? No, and I just says I don't think it's right what you're saying. No, no, no screaming much. Like nothing. To, uh, Sometimes I think it's the best way to face it. Yeah. Face on. And see after that, do you get tens off him every week? but you have a laugh and a joke but see if it's see like in the, the radio show right seen a monday and right. somebody's not played well You'll say they've not played well, but it's not like digging no. them out. No. You're being constructive and says, look, he just wasn't on it today. But Barry, they're going to take that for, maybe not for us today, but for yourself, where you will think, well, he's played the game, he's just seen that I've had a bad game today. But seeing that it comes from guys that have never played football in their lives, have never been in that situation, never been in that experience, it's a wee bit hard to take no. sometimes because you're thinking, right, okay, they are fucking I you play for. Just even with other teammates, you're reading it. Say on a Monday, you're going in for your, your breakfast in the morning before you're training, you're opening the pages, and your teammates getting it. And I'm thinking, he wasn't that bad. bad uh -huh. He was actually, he was all right. But this guy's grilling him. Did you need to protect him for the press at Clyde? Aye, ah, all the time. Mate. All the time. Stuff I got up to. But what I want to ask you, Barry, tenth, I could get my 10th trophy in a row this season, which is so important to me <laughs> and the family. How do Rangers stop Celtic? From a coach's point of view. <laughs> How do Rangers stop them? Because I think. Do, do you know what it comes down to with this Rangers team? Mentality. Aye. And I think they've got it. We were speaking about it last night. I think they've got a wee bit of it this, this year. They've learned for their mistakes. Yeah, there's no doubt. See, the first six months last season, it was pretty close. Mm -hmm. Celtic come back for the winter break and just went into overdrive. For some odd reason, Rangers didn't. They? they struggled. I think they've learned their lessons. I think they're stronger mentally. I'm looking at some of the players. Tavernier, I've always liked him as a player. He looks mentally stronger. Mm -hmm. Other players that I you Davis, signed. I think you're seeing the real Davis now. Yeah, I right always said that. Tavernier, see, yeah. Dave, Dave will go sometimes, you'll not really see much of him in a game, right? Yeah. But see what he does. He does it effectively. Mm -hmm. And the big call, see, the last couple of games, Griggsy. Griggsy's massive. He has a question for you. I know Rangers you know what you, we'll not ask you your set can Rangers want to learn, but how do you know what to do that? No, no, what about your old time that you played with Rangers 11? Could you do that off the top of your head? Wow! wow. I would need what to sit. What career 11? I, I would need to sit doing all 24 hours, man. Mm -hmm. Who would Griggsy be your goalie, though? Aye. Remember Larson's chip, V Claus? Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> no, I, you know, I've, I've played with a few. I've played with, with the goalie. What, so wait, he was better than Claus? McGregor? I Joe Hart, Ben Foster, Brad Friedel. Alan Friedel. McGregor's the best goalkeeper. Of. What's he like on it? I know that's a, the pure wee boy, wee boy question, but what's he like on it? Is he mad on a night out? Aye, but he's brilliant, man. Uh, he's, was that, he's that was the story with the cup final, wasn't it? The what? When you went out before the cup final for the treble. Was it you, McGregor, Bob, and who was the other one? Craig Moore, wasn't it? Oh, the wife came that, in the pub. I Craig Moore told me that. Aye, I don't know if Greg's was there. I think he was. He said he was playing the puggy right. when all the wives came. Well, listen, I'm a big one. See, when you win some, you've got to go and celebrate. You've got to enjoy it, of course Aye, you do. I, I kind of celebrate it. I think that was the fourth day. <laughs> 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 I went over the score a wee bit. My missus dragged me out and got me back to my bed. Right, well, know your full team, but since you're a centre midfielder, two best centre midfielders then. That's what I want to know. You played with? Uh-huh. Jesus, man. Two guys. 
Two guys got to be in there. Uh, but then you've got Van Bronckhorst, Reina, Alberts. Claudio Reina. Cla- Cla- Claudio. You loved Claudio Reina, didn't you? Phone box to sell. He saw, uh, you would never think Claudio Reina, he wouldn't be one of you. Think his boy's amazing. Was Dortmund, is he? Aye, his boy plays with Dortmund. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm telling you, Sam, we signed him for Wolfsburg, right? And I, I think it was something like three million or four million pound. I hadn't heard them. He was good. But then obviously you do a wee bit. He's coming in uh, the morrow. You kind of look up and say, right, oh, by the way, he's played at a good level. Pfft, seen you train with the boy. He could play the game, mate. And it Every, empty, everything, really? everything you want in a midfielder strong he was quite wee but strong could handle the ball could pass could score could run it's just how he kept the ball no. yeah. like he, could, he, wouldn't, he would never worry about him getting the ball away yeah. recklessly oh. he just kept the ball he was fucking so good I want you to do the teams I want you to do what about Gattuso are you there with him now aye what? is he a maniac I don't know, I mean, I just think he lived, played up to it. So you see, you get certain people. No, like that. do you know, he was, he was a feisty character, yeah. man. He was he was in training, he was 100% all the time. He would go through you in a minute. But um, he liked a nice red wine. But he kind of, he, he, he couldn't get into the midfield. I know. Then just sold him. Was he, he poor could, technically? No, poor, but no. No, he could, he could, Reno could handle the ball, but his game was about getting about the pitch and getting in people's faces. Yeah. Van Bronckhurst was excellent. Excellent player. Mendes too, uh, guy. Mendes too. And, and, and our Kevin Thompson. Tom, Tomo, huh? Tomo was a, a brilliant football player. A brilliant football player. It'd be a hard one to... Was there anybody you played with a lot? Uh, Lee Boyer. I played with Lee Boyer. Lee Boyer? At, Lee Boyer was a brilliant partner. Was he, huh? Aye. What, Never really he was good. tough, wasn't he, Lee, Lee Boyer? Aye, I mean, I tell you, he was built like that. He was tiny. But see making the runs, he was brilliant at it. Right, last question. What about in terms of management, right? Players that you've managed, who would be your top three wingers? Wingers? I was a fat winger when I was with him, but so it's hard to judge that, wasn't I? Aye, I've never after, been seen. After the episode with him, I never signed another winger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know what to end this today. Oh, you, it's good. You, could, you could ask so many questions. Why do we so, do sign two? Uh, <laughs> yeah, why do we do part two? You come on next week because Andy will be back next week. That'd be good. And there'll be a few stories for Blackpool and all that. Fancy it? I'll come on next week, mate. Oh, what a hero. I'll come on. Love that. This is fine, away. This is always good. What? You don't want to go? Nah, we'll just stay for another 10 minutes. Is that all right? Right, what else do you want to know, Phil? <laughs> See, that would be good, right? I played with Greece in Scotland all 21s, right? You know, you never got a game on the time I was at under 21s. It was always fucking soapy. Well, yeah. Derek Sutter. Derek Sutter. Well, I'll give you one. Do you know what I like about Greece? And this is one of the reasons why I always say he's the best goalkeeper. Obviously, we had Kloss and we had Anti Naomi. Remember him? He was a right good goalkeeper. Yeah, he, was good finish, uh-huh. he couldn't get in. And I remember him, he was like kind of dis- walking about like disillusioned a wee bit. And he just says, I need to go. When Rangers wouldn't let him go, let like, free him. He went to Dunfermline, went to St. Johnson. I love the fact that. So he what Rangers it. said to McGregor, you can go? No, they put him out in loan. loan right. So he went and done it the hard way. He went yeah. and got experience. As a lot of people would say, nah, I can't, I'm just going to. I can't be bothered. I can't be arse fighting here. But he he was always like that for a 15 year old boy. Do you think he's he, got a similar mentality to you? Oh, 100%. Gregor. But why do you think now that that mentality is out of the game? I don't it? know whether it's the way they're, they're, they're coached. Or I think it's the way they're brought up in honour, the modern society, but it's totally out of the game. It's a snowflake either, fair Aye. See, see back in your day and even my day, like, you were allowed to be shouted at and told straight to the point that you fucking thought oh, I mate, always find that was now. the best part I liked it because it made because if, if you had nothing about your side you would curl up crumble and you would disappear out of football in life but see if you had something about you you would turn around and say fuck him mm. I'm going to prove him but whereas now it's like they get shouted at look at the Hibs situation a few years ago when the players went to see the chairman Peter aye. remember the, the, the Lenny Lenny gave them a Lenny bit. Henry huh? aye gave them a wee bit and they all went and complained, mm. laying it at the door or whatever. That shouldn't have happened. No, I'm not. It shouldn't have happened. I think that's the difference is that... But see, coaching now, there's, see, a lot of, there's a lot more to do with drills, right? They'd rather look good on the training pitch than actually get a personal on a one-to-one level with these kids. Yeah. And that's why you could take criticism off coaches, yeah, because yeah. you knew they cared about you. Yeah. See, now, it's they think coaching is putting on a session. That's not coaching no, kids. I, I think coaching it's important. Kids is getting... See, um, see the news, a manager, I made a, a point. See, like, we're only Tuesday, Thursday, and we've got a game on a Saturday. So I'm only seeing my boys maybe six, seven hours a week. I make a point to go around four or five on each training night. Spend two minutes with them. Yeah. 
goes a long way. How you doing? How's family? Uh, Everything all right? That's, that's massive. Enjoying it. See that wee two minutes? The players will run through a brick walls for you. You're showing a bit of interest and then I don't want to be a manager that just walks out and just stands like that and doesn't look at them or speak to them. Yeah. I want them to feel comfy with me. Aye. Tried that with Slaney and it didn't work, obviously. Can, but I was going to say, can you remember any one to one conversation? I mean, I actually, to be fair, it was two spells. I actually was in your office quite a lot. Mm-hmm. It was brilliant, like, um, life advice but obviously at that time I just didn't obviously take it do you know what I mean you told no. me that when he when he was in his office you used to go in there to fart and then walk back out <laughs> big boy was like dear dear <laughs> dear my nose Fair, do you think you are a better manager now with Kilty Hearts in terms of like a mindset Aye. than you were at the beginning when you started this because you think you've just experienced a lot of things mm-hmm. in the last few years that made you realise right, I need to change a wee bit because Aye. the people are different See, when I came out of playing at 37, strength to manager, I was still like a kind of captain motivator. Aye. But I've learned all the year, life's different, people are different. Mm-hmm. You've got to understand what kind of characters. There's, there's guys that I could maybe go a bit stronger than others, or others that you need to watch. So uh, that's the kind of things I've, I've learned. And I think it's important that the players have got a relationship, a personal relationship, yeah. that my door's open. Whether it's gambling, whether I mean I've had a couple of instances at Kelty where there's been suicidal thoughts with a couple of the players. Yeah. And Was they've, they've come in, they've spoke to me. I can't help them, but I can put them ah, somewhere. Somewhere. Oh, and they've come through it and thankfully they're they're on the, the correct path. So that's, that's management's so much more now than just ah, putting aye, training it's sessions. Quite a lot of, it's, it's not about training you sessions. Said that you had the coach, yeah, it? it's about picking a start and a living. Aye, you've got to do all your drill, set up your training, but also People have got issues in life and it's more open now to go and speak about it. Yeah. So my door's got to be always open for the issues, whether it's personal, whether it's football. Come and speak to me. If I can help you, I can go and guide you and put you in the, the right direction. What was, the, what was the, the day you left? Was it you jumped in your pal's motor? The van. The van. Shocking, man. I'll never forgive myself for it. And you're in the change room, got to get changed the So you and Bob are setting the van up and then me and the boys are walking it. My mate's fan was still here because he dropped his half. I was just like, I need a way, mate. He'd, but I, do you know what? My head was, it was all right. I, I, I'm just, you were going to a concert. But I think I must have told myself that they'd be a bit wild. You know what I mean? So I've jumped right in uh, my mate's fan and went in all garlic. And that was me, mate. I was just like, I'm done. I, I, I never played football again. That was my last That's day. That was your last game? Well, my last training session I ever turned up. And never, I think I played. No, I didn't. Never, ever kicked the ball again. Were you not thinking where the fuck Slaney now? Aye. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded like a bit of a then I'm like, I'm saying to myself, is am I not open enough for him to come and speak to me if there is a, a problem? No, there is not like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I, I, I don't think might you have not have helped him, but I would have put him in the right, the right place or whatever. But all the coaching badges, they didn't, they didn't set you up for, for some. No, they don't. Do you know but I mean? I'm lucky. My missus is a. No, you're right. My missus is a trained psychotherapist. So is she? I'll get, come up the night then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just to get. Therapy, nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> see, when, see when you were planning that, and so would she speak to you? No, she's only done it since I came out of retirement. Um, Do you think that's why you and mellows as well? Because no, I, I've still, that... I've still got. I don't want to take all the stuff that kind of got me where I'm at. I've still got that fire, mm-hmm. but I know when to use it and when not to use it. There's still a place and a time I think for having a blast at boys in terms of management, mm. but there's also. A way of doing it. It's not like coming in as when we were growing up as younger, uh, younger boys getting teacups chucked about the restrooms and things whacked off your head. You can't do that now. No. You See, can't uh, do that. what's that old firm like playing in? Can you, can you hear from what's going on? No, you can't hear. Are they your favourite games? Aye. Aye, that, they built up. It was like. You played a weekend game and say you had no European game during the week. See that Monday to the Saturday after another the Sunday it was? That's when the build up started. Yeah. Because obviously the press, it would start in the papers and then it would just I, I would get it probably Thursday, Friday, and then my sleep would get less. Get less and less. Because oh, I was see, just when you're sleeping, what, you, what are you worried or are you worried about losing the game? No, or I'm just buzzing for the game. game no, uh, no I, I was always enjoying them when you uh, win. See, when you see, you've been a Rangers fan, that's your dream, you and you're the only thing that Rangers fans about to beat Celtic. When you finish that and you've won great performance, did you really go and enjoy yourself in that part? I, 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 I never went out. Did you not? No, I, you couldn't go after. I had one incident when I went out after an old firm game and I got in trouble. <laughs> so. What do you mean you got in trouble? What happened? 
I get in trouble, I was fighting, so... What, in Hamilton? Aye, uh, Bordeaux. Oh, yeah. Did you win? Uh, of course. Yeah, I <laughs> love that. Was it, was it you and your brother? Aye. Uh -huh, I think he's told, told, uh -huh. told you that. that. That was one of the stupid That's ones. That's a shame, isn't it? That, that Aye. We live in that world. Because I was just with my brother and a couple of his pals and my pals. It was quiet. There was nobody around about. But that's a mistake I made. So you got to quickly learn for that. And I did. But you've got to enjoy the moments. Oh, right. and You've got to enjoy it. The, the games are brilliant. But see, just leading up to the games, there's nothing better. Nothing better going out in that warm up and you're getting the atmosphere. Especially at Ibrox, when I mean, you go out and obviously there's 8,000 Celtic fans. I mean, 40 minutes before the game, it's pretty much half full yeah. at that stage. I just used to get the, the energy off the fans. I used to always run up at the touchline and be screaming at you. And, you see, you get nervous? I was nervous before every single game I played. Well, yeah. I, I, I never felt like that. I wasn't ready. Yeah. No nervous, of, shit, I don't want the ball. Yeah. Just the uh, nervous excitement. Mm -hmm. To get out there. This might sound stupid, but did you would you rather play Ibrox or Celtic Park no films? Because I know a lot of people love with their way fans. Playing away film. Aye. I I did well. I didn't mind the bathroom off. Didn't enjoy the Hamden Cup final ones. That the atmosphere's it's shit. Crap there, aye. Ah yeah, the, the atmosphere's no great. Have you got a favourite game? One that you always look back on. <laughs> Just says Hamden shit. The, the <laughs> Scottish Cup oh, final. The, well, free, the, the, the free kick? kick? Aye. Probably that. And Many goals my, you scored that season? My 22, I think. But my probably like, my first Celtic goal, because it's always again, oh, you've got a like, homegrown, the one that we won 5 1. Uh, but then, see, the, the, see, that was the thing. We would go and beat Celtic 5 1, right? Celtic would be the form team, like playing better than us. Yeah. We would go and win. See, the Foley No Firm game, we would then start to motor a wee bit. We'd be playing really well. Celtic would be off it a wee bit. And they'd go and beat a 6-2 six, six, or 3-0. Yeah. You didn't get the results in Celtic Rangers it's, games anyway, right? It was wild, wasn't it? It was wild. But see the, see the teams. Look, we're coming up against Baldy, Mayalbe, Vohan, Agath, Thompson, McNamara, Petrov, Lennon, Hartson, Sutton, Larson, Maravchek. And then you've got your team, Amaruso, Moore, Reina, Arthur Newman, Kloss, me, Van Bronckhurst, Reina. Alberts, mm. De Boer, Canigia, Avaladze. I mean, it was, see, when you, you lined up in that tunnel, you knew, fucking, this is going to be some game. This, this is going to be like a. Did you ever fight the tunnel? Half time in that? No, it was good in the tunnel because it was all quite serious. Yeah. It was quite serious. You just on because we used to stand, Celtic were a physical team, they were Massive, always bigger. They? We were quite a, a small team. Used to just look at See in the dressing room before a set of Rangers, would you talk or would you just let the manager talk? Would, would you always say something? No, I would always go in. People? I, I did my shout and all that before it, but I'm going out here, we fucking ready for this, come on. This is war. Oh, this is war. Is your hair stirring up your back, you know? This is war. But that would have been the same in the Celtic <laughs> dressing room, but do you know what? See, before we went out, that before the game started, there was total respect for the players. Yeah. And if you ask any of the Celtic players, I mean, I've seen plenty of interviews, they'd be the same. But you cross that white line, the respect, it was just, you were in a war, it was who who wanted it most in the day or who performed better. But then after the game, again, you would maybe bump into them a week later in a restaurant or in a bar and it would be fine. Yeah. Everything would be cool. That's what I loved about that. It was real respect amongst... But you said it was Arthur Newman that taught you that, wasn't it? Because you used to say you hated Celtic, you know Aye, when you're younger, aye, but you've got to respect your... You, you learn that as you get older, you've got yeah. to... I think you've got to give respect to teams before you play them, because you can't think... I think that's arrogant if you think you can go out and just... steamroller a team and no think they're, they're a good team. You've got to... They were fantastic players, but... Yeah. yeah they're, they're, they're playing Celtic Rangers and then they're meeting up maybe for a Scotland squad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A few weeks later, I don't know. And we all got on great. I, I mean, there was like Jackie and Rav Douglas. Some size of boys, Rob Douglas. Aye, <laughs> but we, we we got on, we got yeah, on totally yeah. fine. <laughs> there was never any, never any like divides or anything. Yeah. And we still, at the day we play that Star Sixes, and you bump into them all. It's, we all got on great. Because you had the pitch, like you said, you would think you and Lenny hate each other, but it wasn't like that, was it? No. No. Totally, totally opposite of that. I totally respected them. I thought, again, an underrated player. He, he was a certain player for Celtic yeah. that Celtic needed. 
if Neil Lennon wasn't there in the Celtic team, I think he would have struggled. Because mm-hmm. he just sat in that wee area and kept it simple. On the pitch, wanted to rip each other's heads off. Did you know what happened to Bonnie Heed? He was an assist coach or something like that? No, it was Martin O'Neill. What was it? It was a nice uh, Celtic scored. I came off injured and done my knee. And Celtic scored. And I didn't even mean it. No, that way I was like, fucking hell. I went to chuck it that way and it went on this land on Martin O'Neill's seat. <laughs> what, did he, what, what did he say? I just sat there like that. <laughs> <laughs> and they were all looking around. I, I didn't even mean it. To be fair, it was one of the ones I was lying the grunt. But no, I, I, it was brilliant. They, they games back again. That, that's something that that's the only thing miss. I miss about being retired was was day games. Did yeah. you? We, there would be no other game that would touch that with it. Even doing England and stuff. See the cup <laughs> final, you beat Arsenal. No, I know it doesn't it's touch it. Doesn't even get close to it. it doesn't get close to it. No games touch them. I, I, when I went down to Birmingham and Blackburn, even Blackpool, the first thing when I walked into the dressing room, going to get us to an old firm game. Ah, going to take us up to an old, old firm, firm game. Yeah. So the old firm games normally who, were on a who Sunday. Who did you ever take up? I, I brought the full squads up. They loved it. Obviously, half and half, so I had to get tickets for the Celtic. So wait, some of your players so would be sitting the Celtic end and some of you... We'd been in the hotel the Saturday night. We'd obviously go for a, a night out, make it a team night out on the Sunday. You had to get two minibuses. No So way. you'd be splitting the tickets up, so some would go to Celtic and some would go to the Rangers then, aye. And then you'd meet up after Then we'd meet aye, up after it for a, a drink. <laughs> that's brilliant, that's amazing. But that's the, they loved it. And no, I used to, I never really watched the game. I used to watch their reaction, they'd be like, ah, oh, they just couldn't believe it. Mm-hmm. They were just astounded at the, the occasion. That's the fans. That, that is right, like even what we was. The wee Alec Lee always in the early days, and we were I, we were we were a big Celtic kind of. Because I remember you saying to me, "What's Sunderland like for a club?" Mm. And you were saying, "Do they like it? Do the boys like a drink and all that?" You're always curious to know where the clubs like to drink. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we had a lot, a lot of Celtic, a lot of Irish boys, so a lot of Celtic. And when Rangers would beat Celtic and a Sunday, fucking Alec would find the ball and we dog it for the warm up. I did come out later, five minutes later, like I <laughs> fucking peel lined them up, but it was good, it was off in the banter, but the English don't get how big it is. Yeah. I mean, until, I walked, I walked into Birmingham and I, I became real close with him, Stephen Carr. You said that, huh? Republic Ireland. Well, I think he was the captain yeah, for Republic right. Ireland. Un- again, right back. frightening player. Couldn't believe how good he was. Always thought he was decent until you train with him and play with him. I walked in, he just grilled at me. I just grilled back at him. Never really spoke for about three weeks. Really? Was it uh, that, John? And then it? we became really, really close to each other. It was mental. Because that would be similar to Duffy saying that he hates Halliday. It's probably the same uh, Stephen Cowan uh, probably used to say he hated you because you were a Rangers. Uh, and then but until you get to know uh, them, and we end up, we were, we were close, went out for a, a right few nights out. Good banter, it, it was good. And obviously I had Roy Aiken as the assistant manager. Massive Celtic yeah. man, brilliant, what a coach he was. Mm-hmm. But he did good banter the Celtic Rangers thing. And then Granny, Peter Grant as well. So Where did you have Granny? Birmingham. Uh, Birmingham. Oh, but Alec McLeish, obviously. Yeah. Aye, so it was all like good. I used to love it. Getting fired into each other. Yeah. But what, again, it's... What they've ruined in the old firms is the crowd now, but taking off the... Ah, I cannot. What is that about? You've got to see for me, you walk out of Ibrox, three quarters Rangers, and then you had the, yeah. the, the Celtic bit, and it's the same at, at Celtic Park, and you walk out that right side, the vast majority of it was Rangers. The rest Celtic, that's all firm games, that's the way it should be. They need to get back, they need to sort that out, I think it's a joke. Right, you going back to Jesus? I mean, we'll, can I come? We'll get a wee night sorted. I'll talk to you with the missus, that's all, then me and you'll get a wee game of pool. No problem. Love that. Yes, Are we sorry. going to get a night out? We, we, we can't uh, even get a night get, out. Uh, we can't even get a night out. It's fancy. Is that 10 o'clock yeah. coffee? Is Rob McLean alright? Right, how are we ending this? Uh, you got a tinger right now? Oh, we've only forgot to do the day. Yes, sir. Uh, I can boogie if you sing a concert. Have you seen that video, Andy Considine? What one? He's done. He's dressed up with a woman. Is that his stag do? Stag do, huh? Oh, don't I, don't uh, even go there. You want to do it? Can you boogie? <laughs> I think I think sell to it all day Is that still rolling? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Mentality, innit? <laughs> what, do you, what do you think of quadruple treble? What do you feel uh, about you his claim that he's part of the 10 in a row? He claims to be... Well, listen, a big part of it. 
get beat one 0 v Ross County. Uh, Ross County that game away. I've came on. We scored. That changed the mentality of the club that day. And it was, <laughs> hey, 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 snowballed effect onwards. So listen, I'll be there at the end to pick it up. A trophy. Oh, you tell the story about big Charlie to that day. Oh, I like, mean Char- told that, eh? Me and Charlie are obviously really close mates. Uh, and then um, that day, we also got your hair up. like him. Is that's how you're modelling or that? Do you think I'm actually quite good looking? At that? You've got better looking as you're getting older. Remember when I signed for Clyde? I, I, I was with Bob at um, Mullerwell. And I'd good, so I was horrendous at Mullerwell. But short hair, like army cut, sports, not that. Wasn't he a good looking boy? Still done a bit, but that's not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> but here, uh, with Bob, and that, my first day I signed, I came in the dressing room, he's like, I said, I'm looking good, big man. He's like, You went for about a 1 out of 10 to a 2 out of 10. That's horrendous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but what was going to say? Um, what's up about the Celtic Rangers? Oh, the Charlie. Ah, yeah, you know, oh, all right. Uh, uh, Charlie, you've, um, you've told me they're winning 10 in a row, haven't you? I think they will do. No. Do you think Rangers will stop it? Aye. But you, this is what I, I, I find hard to believe. These players have been here the last four years. The Rangers players, they've not really brought anybody in this season that have changed that. McGregor, Davis has been there, Jack's been there, Manella's been there, Kenny, Devo. <laughs> they've, they've all been there so and I the, the thing that's kind of buggering me the now is right and I don't but think it's, it's what buggering you I don't think for one second because Barry Ferguson I'm trying to be this big Celtic hero fuck that I couldn't give, care less about that I, I'm my own man I mean I'm in, enter- I'm, the, I know, I'm in the entertainment business whatever comes there it's that way so what I'm going to say is um, what was I going to say a bit the 10 at the 10 no with the Rangers players What's changed for this season? I know you say learn from their mistakes, but they should have learned the year before. They came back again at the Christmas break, and mentality. What I'm really getting scared about is the new crowd. I think that's helped them. I do. I do. I think it's helped them. Yeah, it could. Uh, listen, that's a good point. It could. Thanks very much. It could help them. No pressure, and you'll see. Well, I don't know when the fans are going to be allowed in. Doesn't look any time soon, does it? Not really. No. Um, listen, when's the game? Two weeks. Yeah. Are you doing um, TV with it? No, I'm, I'll just be sitting watching it in the house. Oh, have you seen the house? Unreal, innit? Scary, mate. Scary. You just know why to finish your teams, no? <laughs> Combined we'll do that next week. Do you want to do I'll do it next week. Love that. Because Holiday's the one that's... Well, I want to get brought in as a sub for Andy Holiday. <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> way. Andy Holiday. See, see, just on Holiday, see when he came to Blackpool, was he was he in awe of you? Because obviously he told us on his interview you were his hero. Would, would he let you know that? Did he tell you? No, no. I, I, I never seen... I, I seen the interview. Uh-huh. One of my mates had says to me about it. But Did you like I it? Did, well, I didn't, I didn't know... I know Andy was a big Rangers man, but I didn't know that... that you were he never kind of let on down there. He trained, I tell you one thing about him, he was some trainer. Was he? Aye. Trained like. But he said you played as a manager and you were still, everyone still had to pass you the ball. <laughs> <laughs> no. I took over and they were having a nightmare. Right. Bob says to me, listen, you need to come back in. I says, Bob, I've not trained for six weeks. I've, I've just been enjoying red wine and focusing on the manager. He says, you'll need to come back and play, we're struggling. And I come back and played. And I was the best player. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and you're still in great nick, isn't you? Do you run every day? Train. Do you run? Aye. Train is good for the heat. Aye. I still train three, four times a week. What yeah. do you go for run? Aye. In the gym? I, 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 I look after my diet, man. My, my knee, my, my ankle, sorry, still gave me a bit of grief. So I can maybe do five, six K and that'll do me. Get but it's good for up here as well. Mm-hmm. Aye. Oh. Six, that was my sixth operation on it, so... I had to get up. Fergie, thanks very much for coming on, mate. No worries. What a guy. Am I allowed on next week? Or yes, careful, definitely. Right. No. I know, but are you actually going to come on? Or? I know, you just said that. Oh, you? He's, he's not going to nah, come on. Nah, he's talking <laughs> shit. Oh, come on. Right, and we'll just oh, talk come. about topical things instead of your career. Aye. We'll just talk about the week. weekend games. That's it. up to old form. Wow. Do you know what we'll do next week for the crowd? Well, why don't we leave it next week and you can do a week Tuesday for the build up to Celtic Rangers? Let's do that one. That'll be on it. And I'll tell you what will come that day. You ready? Big tactical board will be there. Yes. There you go. And we'll I'll bring it. it, I'll bring it. You bring it, and what I'll do is, I'll go like the Selic head, you go the Rangers, Rangers head, head, and then we can discuss the... the. Why? And you can roll about with each other in the car park. Aye. And then you... But then what we'll do, say, is, see with the Selic Rangers, I'll go... Hey, come on, I've got to get through Edinburgh. Right, let's go. Right, I'll, come with, I'll come with you, man.